start streaming. Okay, I think I'm live now. Hello everybody, in case you can see me. It's a pleasure to see you here today on my channel. My name is Dustin Cormier and welcome to How to Rock Spirit. Today, uh, I'm just going to get our comments connected here. Today we are doing a live, oh great, here we go. Today we're doing a live exposition of some text about Scorpio, Scorpio Sun as a homosexual or a bisexual. In my case, leaning more towards the bisexual. I'm so sorry for... Here we go. What I'm trying to do here is connect... Ah, there's my friend Goosey. Hi, Goosey. Uh, okay, so now we're connected on YouTube, which means if anybody would like to add a comment to our discussion, feel free. Uh, I'm probably just going to try as hard as I can to rap as much as I can. Uh, for anyone who would like to have questions, um, we'll probably aim to get the heavier ones answered at the end of the video. Uh, as just a free-for-all sort of chill-out talk session. And I'll answer whatever questions I can as we go along. I'll be peeking at them. So feel free to join the discussion. Uh, today, in case you haven't noticed, I'm wearing my funky... This is my bosom shirt. It's kind of like one of those crop-style ones. <laughs> Thought I'd give that one a try. Bosom's my punk band, and I'm always trying to wear goofy-ass shit while I go out and play my punk music with my band. Um, yeah, uh, so, Scorpio Sun for bisexual or homosexual males. That's the topic of today's discussion. Uh, for a little bit of context, I should say, um, yeah, my name's Dustin Cormier. Uh, I've recently come out as bisexual, uh, sexually bisexual, as I like to say. Uh, the reason I always say it that way is bi sexual, like, like erotically bisexual, is because well, I'm I consider myself as like, you'll notice in the zodiac, in the sextrology book, it often talks about Scorpio as being like a lesbian in a man's body, and I deeply identify with that. Uh, I could talk. I know eventually I'm going to have a whole video talking about that. Um, but just for context's sake, know that, uh, I, erotically I'm definitely bisexual, and it's been a huge relief for me to talk about that and to talk about stuff this way. I tend to lean more towards women. Uh, I enjoy the feminine at a deeper level. Uh, I think it's a tantra thing that I've been interested in. Uh, but I love sexuality. What I will say, uh, again, we're going to get to the juicy parts of why you came here, homosexual Scorpio. I just want to give you context towards me. Uh, Venus is my, I'm a Vedic astrologer. Venus is my Atmakarika. Uh, and I've got Venus in Virgo in my D1 and my Navamsha. My regular chart, my Venus is in Virgo, the 29th degree of Virgo. It's debilitated. Uh, for Vedic people, it's the, also in Virgo in my Navamsha, which is a double emphasis there, and it's Venus, it's my Atmakarika, it's debilitated. Boy, was I frustrated when I learned all that. But, you know, just because you have a planet debilitated doesn't mean that you can't derive some something from it. You can get something special out of any aspect that you have if you understand the divine knowledge. Venus, for me, comes through in a very analytical way. I go by what my head sort of says about my erotic feelings. It's not always the... It, it has blocked me from sexuality in the past. But recently I decided to go with what my heart feels erotically is okay. And it came through as me being deeply okay with being bisexual. And I've had experiences with men that have been really juicy. Very juicy. Uh, I just love, if you understand it in the Virgo way, it's Mercury, it's the Earth, it's sensual. I'm deeply sensual, as all Scorpios are. 
Uh, and I love the feeling of, you know, I, I love to suck a dick. I love it. It's like the same thing. You have as much control with the dick as you do with the pussy. You go to the bottom of the dick and there's different nerves that react to different parts of the body and you can really get the thing going. It's beautiful. It really is. Uh, and I love to get fucked. <laughs> I mean, I go through the whole, like, the douche thing and, like, you know, I clean out down there and I go through all the steps. I go very slow. I lube up a lot, like, a lot, a lot. And, but when I finally get there, I can take one. <laughs> I can take one for the team. And I love it. I think it's a, it's a Venus and Virgo thing for me. I'm just deeply erotically connected to the sensations down there but I feel like I you know yeah anyway I'm still exploring what I am I'm almost like a transgender guy it's kind of a place that I'm at <clears throat> and I'm lately I've been deeply open to feeling out these things in myself experiencing them and then thinking about them afterwards that got me to bisexuality and I love my bisexuality and that's why I'm gonna be here today uh, this is catering to homosexual Scorpio uh, in a sexy way because we're talking about sextrology the classic by Starsky and Cox it's gonna be we're gonna try to we're gonna keep it sexy folks I'm gonna try to keep it juicy and get in character to, you know, this is as much an exercise in freedom of erotica for me, as well as it is reading these texts so that you guys can get the textual appreciation of Scorpio as a homosexual male. Ah, so without further ado, I'm just going to turn my phone off. Should have had that done already. You are right to think so. Ah, forget it. My phone rings, I'll deal with it. <laughs> so, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. My name is Dustin Cormier. This is Scorpio Sun for homosexuals and bisexuals. I really hope that... No, I know the mic's working. I tried it already a little bit. I would love for anybody, if you're watching me and you see my mouth moving and you can't hear me talking, I'm assuming people in the comments would have said so. Cool. We seem to be good. Like I said, feel free to make me comments and engage in the discussion however you like. <clears throat> now to start, uh, I guess I should say, I've already done a video on Scorpio Sun sexuality in general. And the latter part of that video catered to Scorpio straight male. If you're watching this, take a peek at Scorpio, the Stor Scorpio straight male video that I've already done. And you'll see the bigger part of that sextrology book. Uh, I'm supplementing only the, the homosexual part uh, of that book. Uh, which... It, so if you read the first part that I already did, it'll tell you a lot more about Scorpio Sun. Now I want to start with something to give us a bit of context for today's discussion. So that's why we're starting with Erotic Astrology, The secrets, the Sex Secrets of Your Horoscope Revealed by Phyllis Vega. Just to get us warmed up. <clears throat> uh, you know, we can take the themes from this little reading and think about them in the rest of our reading. Uh, I should also say later on in this video, if you feel like watching, we're going to go through all of the couplings of Scorpio with all the other 12 signs of the zodiac. <clears throat> now, Sun and Scorpio. Represented by a scorpion, an animal that hides in dark places and inflicts a painful sting on its enemies when threatened. The eighth sign is the most feared, misunderstood, and maligned in the zodiacal family. More concerned with feelings than appearances, Scorpio responds to the world through emotion, 
based on the control and understanding of human feelings and the role they play in life. As a member of this mysterious, enigmatic sign, your immeasurable curiosity prompts you to probe, poke, and prod the depths of experience to discover what lies beneath the surface. Sounds like me. You have a way of penetrating other people's psyches in order to ferret out their hidden agendas while keeping your plans to yourself. The scorpion lives in a black and white world of fixed ideas and opinions. On the surface, you come off as easygoing, congenial, and gregarious. But underneath, you're stubborn and impervious to changes not of your own making. Inherently secretive, you have your own way of doing things. And even those close to you may have difficulty understanding your true motivation. Your perplexing ways make you hard to live with, but you're fiercely loyal to those you do love. When you make a commitment, you stick to it, and you don't run out on your pals at the first sign of trouble. Your capacity for stringent self-control makes you the perfect person to call on, uh, to call on in a crisis. Smart Confident, persistent, and determined, you accomplish anything you set your mind on. <sighs> Neighbors in my house are being particularly loud today at 4 p.m. <clears throat> now, in bed. <clears throat> the quintessential Scorpio struggle is that of attaining mastery over desire. Hmm. Despite the signs standing as the epitome of smoldering sexuality, the typical scorpion is capable of sublimating strong physical and emotional desires when it suits. More than the members of any other sign, Scorpios understand the power wielded by sexual overindulgence, because they go there themselves usually. However, you also understand the power of celibacy, and at times may alternate between periods of intense sexual activity and total abstinence. In the bedroom, no one is as passionate as a Scorpio, and its members have well-deserved reputations as being enth enthusiastic, prodigious lovers. Your attitude towards sex and love is likely to be all or nothing. You need to feel that you are the one in charge of your own destiny. This can be problematic, because you have a tendency to become consumed by your feelings and desires. You're not above using sex as a means of manipulating and controlling your partner if you believe that you're losing control over your love life. <clears throat> I find that Scorpios, they can sort of dissolve in this love thing because they kind of want to, because The feeling of being drawn to their lover and having the lover be drawn to them makes them feel a certain power. And it's a power that's also give, received by being given away. And so at first they try that and give, give it away and their romantic lovingness is so desired by the other partner. Then the other partner, if they draw it in too quick, suddenly the Scorpio is like, whoop, whoop frozen, icy, and uncommunicative because they gave too much of themselves up in that weird power struggle. <clears throat> when you're in love with someone, your passionate intensity takes your partner's breath away. Despite your possessiveness, you're sympathetic, understanding, intuitive, and capable of deep love and long-lasting devotion. As a Scorpio, you transform those around you, but for the most part, the person in love with you must be prepared to accept you as you are, because he or she will not be able to change you. And that is an important part of the Scorpio. Now, I am just going to make a little reminder to the folks in my house that I'm doing this video. Uh, hopefully that goes okay. I'll be right back. Sorry about the interruption. <clears throat>
So sorry about that. The story of my life. <clears throat> it's worth it living with other people. I'm not happy when I'm with myself. Even if I'm not happy when I'm with other people. It's just, I prefer to have other people either way. <laughs> <clears throat> Continuing forth, this next part is turn-ons and turn-offs of Scorpio. The red-hot sex drive and physical prowess of Scorpios is legendary. You possess a lusty libido and thoroughly enjoy giving and receiving sensual pleasure. Any lover stepping into your lair had better be well prepared because keeping up with you between the sheets is an absolute must. You gotta dig where that's coming from. It's not like, uh... That doesn't say anything other than the fact that Scorpio deeply loves when someone has the virility to keep up with them in the deep passion of the thing. It's something that we enjoy, but we're not going to hit you over the head with it, you know, unless you want us to. <laughs> you require a lot of drama and emotional excitement in your love life. An intimate relationship that is too peaceful kind of bores you. Uh, the scorpion's fascination with sex inspires numerous exotic fantasies of sultry seduction. Acting out these sexy scenarios with your bedmate is a guaranteed turn-on. Since Scorpio's fantasies are often darkly erotic, a bit of mystery or a hint of danger whets your appetite and gets your motor running. Something of an extremist by nature, you tend to equate lovemaking with power and control. With your lover in the role of an obliging love slave, you revel in the ecstatic gratification of all your secret wishes and desires. And if your partner just happens to bring along sex toys and gadgets, so much the better. Yeah, the whole control thing I'm never too heavy on, but I get it. It's definitely a Scorpio interplay. I just find that these books make it so centered on that that anyone reading about Scorpio is, you know, it's the reason why it's so misunderstood. But I guess they have to say it that way because it's there. Scorpios are in this power control consciousness, and it's fun for us, and it's engaging at that deep erotic level. But it's just another limb of it's just another limb of our fun, I guess. I guess it has to be that way. It has to be explained that way. Just, you know, that's the reason why they're so misunderstood, as it said at the start. <clears throat> now, Scorpio responds to an uninhibited bed partner who entices with provocative verbal suggestions and teasing sexual games. Your sensuous nature makes any kind of massage an erotic experience for you. It can serve as a rousing foreplay for steamy lovemaking, taking you to the very edge of intense sensual pleasure. However, a loving, aromatic massage may also rekindle your physical desire so strongly that you feel as though you can't delay sexual grat gratification a moment longer. Since Scorpio is the most sexually charged of all the zodiac signs, your nether regions are extremely sensitive. Any stimulation down below gets you incredibly aroused. Consequently, many a Scorpio bedroom massage has to be abandoned halfway through. <laughs> I can personally attest <laughs> that them's is some facts, let me tell you. So that was, again, Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega, just to whet our appetite, so to say. Uh, I wanted to give a little bit of somewhat of a context before we just jumped right into what's essentially going to be the sort of main text for today. 
Yeah, sextrology. The astrology of sex and the sexes. This is a classic book <clears throat> that was put out. Let me see. I guess I should have figured that out before. I think 2004, at least that was when this version got put out. Yeah, first published in 2005. Um, <clears throat> so it's been out for a little while. And I find this book is just, uh, especially for me, I'm, I'm Leo Rising, and my fir first lord, the sun, since Leo rules my chart, the sun is the ruler of my chart, and the sun is in Scorpio, which means that my first lord is coming through Scorpio. The first house, the rising sign, relates to your body and your appearance. So my appearance is deeply scorpionic. Just my whole rising personality comes out just bleeding Scorpio. Especially because I've got Mars there in Scorpio too, to conjunct the sun. So that goes to say that when I read this, when I read this sextrology book, and it talks about the physical nature of Scorpio, and just the physical dynamics, it's deeply, deeply relatable. So consider this, when if you have like the moon in Scorpio, or if you've got, you know, yeah, the, any of the luminaries, or if your rising sign is Scorpio, if you're a Scorpio ascendant, you might get something out of this too. This goes to say that the sun is not the only part of, it's not the most important part of astrology, but it is a deeply important part. And the people who wrote this book did have the intention of talking about the sun. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> now, this is uh, where we left off when I was doing my other Scorpio reading. Uh, Scorpio straight males. <clears throat> you can feel free to look that up and you'll see it there uh, in my channel. <clears throat> uh, and this, yeah, sorry. Now I should say, this is the juicy part if you've been looking for Scorpio Sun coming through as a homosexual. <clears throat> Typically, Scorpio man's sexuality is black and white, decidedly straight or gay, with no room for gray guesswork in between. This goes to show you that this is just a sun sign reading. I'm a Scorpio and I'm bisexual and I'm very much that gray point. Always consider the context. <clears throat> Usually though, Scorpio sun, decidedly straight or gay. No guesswork. He doesn't believe in bisexuality. For men, that is. <clears throat> Another symptom of that sexism that he projects regardless of his particular sexual preference. Being born into so powerfully feminine a sign, Straight Scorpio puts women on a pedestal, if not binding and gagging them there. Despite his domination fantasies, or indeed as a twisted result of them, he can thus, the straight Scorpio, can easily entertain attraction shared between two women, gay or straight. However, he can't quite make the leap when applied to his own sex. By the same token, gay Scorpio commits to his sexual identity completely, and often at an early age. He invites the same sexual seduction in adolescence as does his heterosexual counterpart. In signature Scorpion manner, accepting his homosexual feelings as fact, not so much coming out of the proverbial closet as never having stepped into it in the first place. To him, sexually ambiguous males are actually no such thing. They are simply fence-sitting cowards whom he'd like to see knocked off. In keeping with the Chthonian ideal, Chthonian means like it's deeply there in the libido regardless of logic, and it's like an archetype. Uh, Chthonian means like archetypal libidinal desires, dark desires that are hard to see consciously. It's a weird word, that's why I gave you that little context. So, sexually ambiguous males are simply fence-sitting cowards whom Scorpio, in general, would like to see knocked off. In keeping with this Chthonian ideal that 
people are defined by their subterranean forces, not capable of mentally choosing whom they want to be, but rather bound to commit to who they already are. Scorpio chalks homosexuality up to simple biology, that his sign is steeped so deep in nature, and thus the feminine subjective experience, mostly manifests as a need to surround himself with fierce female friends, rarely one to even pal around with another gay male friend, or worse, a group of such buddies. He'd sooner have the odd straight male friend, and indeed he often does. <clears throat> Hmm. There's a lot here that's taken in the context of what's been said previously in this book. Uh, but essentially, it's interesting to me that... I Oh, what I wanted to say is that because Scorpio is this way, like, I was... I'm... I get this. In my first part of my sexual exploring career, I was just so straightly straight because I was just like... If someone doesn't get their thing, then they're just, I don't know, I just really identified with straightness, and it crystallized in a fixed, scorpionic way, because I've got desires that I want to express, and thinking about males confuses it, I want to just keep it strictly one way so I can get it done, because that's Mars, the general, which rules Scorpio. So consider this, if you're a ambiguous, sexually ambiguous male Scorpio, uh, don't let yourself be crystallized in the way that Chris Scorpio with its fixed sign nature tends to do. Let your heart take you where it wants to take you. <clears throat> Gay Scorpio is that much more a loner than his straight brother. He seems to haunt the world rather than actively participate in it. Like heterosexual men of this sign, gay Scorpio likes to work alone, so much so that he's not likely to be contented with a remote corner office. He needs utter solitude and is often drawn to professions that require it. Whether a scientist, cartoonist, designer, architect, or superhero of some sort, Scorpio's private workspace is of prime importance as this lair serves as a place of solace and regeneration as well as creative output. He must be alone to fun excuse me. He must be alone to function, a fact that is often lost on acquaintances who engage him in small talk. Scorpio seems to look through people as if he often wishes they weren't even there. Apparently, he doesn't even have one moment to spare for anyone other than himself. And this is one of the secrets to his success. As ambitious as he is, even when young and climbing, he never seeks to impress or eagerly make his mark. On the contrary, he often shuns such publicity or hobnobbing as might speed the plow of his success. Rather, he's confident that he will succeed and sees no use in feeling rushed or riled up. So remember, if a Scorpio seems to be giving you the brush, it's nothing personal. And for gay Scorpio, this is especially true. Yeah, I get that. <clears throat> the gay serpent guy, Scorpio, doesn't casually date. Like any self-respecting Scorpio, he's holding out for the real thing with little interest in inter-rim interaction. In his youth, Scorpio seeks the company of a sophisticated man with whom he fuses on every level. While other males his age are bar hopping and boy hopping in the gay community, the Scorpio might be found at his mentor's home receiving instruction in the finer things. Typically with sexual overtones, the Scorpio plays a boy role to such a daddy. In the extreme, He's trained as a slave to a fiercely dominant master. To one degree or another, this dynamic is intrinsic, a, materialis a materialization of the submissive position Scorpio may have been seduced into during adolescence. 
this is a thing that just happens with Scorpio. Uh, because of that feminine, deeply feminine nature, they want to just give up the role of that dominant master to someone else. Uh, I've played this game with a Capricorn, and it was deeply weirdly satisfying and yet weirdly making me realize that as we're going to see that I wanted to also have that in myself that person who's the top dominant person <clears throat> so in most cases in these situations Scorpio will soon slip out from under the wing of this friend and or sexual guru and commit to the serious solo pursuit of his ambitions. Single, Scorpio may procure a small coterie of fuck buddies who share his non-emotional, no-strings-attached attitude towards sex. Though a deeply emotional person, Scorpio can't invest even a drop of feeling in the mechanical processes of purely sexual experience. In such instances, he ritualistically takes the top position enjoying an oral servicing before bending his buddy over. Detachedness is key, and emphasis is placed on his physical power. Many a scorpion sp sports the requisite cock ring to, shall we say, reinforce this impression. But his association with such individuals will rarely, if ever, see the light of day. To those with whom he interacts from 9 to 5, Scorpio's personal life remains one huge question mark. I'd just like to say here, I, I do get all the deeply non-emotional tones that this is talking about. I guess from the homosexual perspective, they particularly lay it out this way. <clears throat> For anyone who's sympathizing with my, you know, transgender bisexual vibe, I would say that it's possible even for men to make that emotional connection. And it kind of talks about, like, that's what this Scorpio character that they're building up, that's what he ultimately gets to, is a deeper connection with someone, you know? And, he, and even homosexual Scorpio has the capacity to open their heart erotically and at all levels. This is just a particular thing that comes out of the psychology of homosexual Scorpio, especially at, like, younger ages. <clears throat> Though he's secure in his own sexuality, many a gay Scorpio will stay completely silent on the subject if only to perpetuate an aura of mystery. Inquiring minds may find themselves frozen out of society with him, should they ever have the gall to approach the subject. Others may write him off as an asexual anomaly. This used to be more closer to my thing for a long time. <clears throat> um, sorry. Asexual sort of meaning like non-sexual. It's like they're just cute. This cute little guy who just doesn't really think about it that much. <clears throat> Except in secret. <laughs> Until they release it. <clears throat> so, yeah. While others may write him off as an asexual anomaly. The homosexual Scorpio figuring the shit out. Then suddenly, one might learn that the cryptic Scorpio who for years has never so much as hinted where his proclivities lie, is shackling up with a rich and famous man, often someone connected to his own career field. The big question answered, one may still be left wondering how such an insular guy ever ended up meeting so major a mover shaker. In typical Scorpion logic, the question is the answer. In biding his time, unbeholden to any other distracting entanglements, Scorpio has left himself available to pounce on the perfect opportunity when it eventually presents itself. Unseen, this Scorpio male has been laying the psychic groundwork for the inevitability of such an occurrence. Still, it can be explained away in far more nutsy boltsy terms. Via his aloofness, Gay Scorpio creates a mystique of self-importance.
Through focus on his career, he begins to receive the sort of creamy social invitations he finally deigns to accept. All he needs is the introduction to a mogul who sexually appeals, and before you can say his and his hand towels, these two are setting up house. <laughs> Like attracting like, Scorpio is most at ease with someone rich and powerful. His patron name is... <clears throat> his patron's... Bleh, sorry, let me say it again. Like attracting like, Scorpio is most at ease with someone rich and powerful. His patron's name, Pluto, means riches, remember, giving rise to the term plutocracy, ruled by the wealthy. Indeed, to Scorpio, money is power. To boot, the eighth house is that of both sex, and in particular, other people's money, those two attributes being inextricably linked in the serpent man's lustful mind. Face to face with some magnate, Mr. Aloof suddenly comes to life, fixing such a man in his suggestive icy hot gaze. What he hopes to see in the eyes of this heavyweight is the same brand of self-assuredness, luridly staring back. Unlike his straight counterpart, gay Scorpio is no fan of vulnerability. What he looks for in a man's eyes is confidence, conviction, and courage, if not just a pinch of czarish cruelty. <clears throat> Sex, cash, and mutual career interests are the perfect interests for ingredients for the kind of relationship Scorpio can get with. This sounds more shallow than it actually is, because he's so obsessed about career, leaving the little time for a serious bond, it just makes sense to share his life with someone he might also merge with professionally in some capacity. The truth is, Scorpio, gay Scorpio, like his straight counterpart, wants to share everything with his partner. Scorpio can be the most exclusionary gay man on the astrological block when it comes to his romantic commitments. Uh, sexually, then, he and his lover will try to fulfill any and all of each other's needs. And though Scorpio is the consummate top in casual carnal circumstances, love relationships often bring out his submissive side without completely eclipsing his more dominant needs. What the bedroom menu consists of, from night to night, is anybody's guess. Nothing from the sordid to the sublime is beyond possibility. His Chthonian nature doesn't preclude Scorpio from certain scatological experimentation, to be sure, but he, does, he only does unto his significant other what he would have done unto him. Group sex is generally out of the question, and even the odd third would, de would need to be nothing more than a glorified rent boy who could be used by Scorpio and his mate, like two vampires tearing into their prey from end to end. After all, when it comes to love and sex, the Scorpio believes one should share and share alike. Hmm. Very interesting. A lot of trippy shit going on in here. Um, it's interesting to read it, and just I what I always like to say is that I wanted to read this particular book so that homosexual Scorpios can get that vantage of it, but it's very much just focused on Sun and Scorpio and these themes that are just cooked up by these people that are pretty cool. Just always consider the context and don't let yourself get icily frozen into these archetypes um yeah so that was fun uh i hope you guys are enjoying this i'm going to check out some questions and comments before we go further um what we're going into next is cosmic coupling and that's going to talk about the scorpio male uh homosexual male combined with all the 12 possible combinations in the zodiac <clears throat> Capricorn, spirit animal, horse. 
I'm not really sure, Goosey. Uh, if you think of the... I'm answering my friend Goosey's question here. When I think of the spirit of Capricorn, or at least the, the totem or the symbol of Capricorn, is a goat's body with, the ta with its bottom legs are like a fish. Uh, it's like a sea goat is what it's called. Um, even like a little seahorse is kind of like that kind of vibe because it's using the scooping and feeling out its nature on the bottom is what allows it to rise up with the posture of a goat or, you know, that positive upward posture. So a seahorse is closer to the mark, but I've never heard of a Capricorn being specifically connected to a horse. You could be right, Goosey. I don't know. If your spirit feels like a horse, then maybe you should explore that. But I've never made the connection in anything that I've read between Capricorn and a horse. <laughs> but it's good for you to be exploring, Goosey. Uh, again, these are YouTube comments. Anybody who's watching can feel free to talk with the community about anything that you like. Feel free to ask me anything. Any really hard-hitting personal questions, I'll probably try to save till the end. For now, we're going to go through a few of these. We'll check for more comments, and then we'll go through the rest, and then we'll check for comments at the end as well. I hope you guys are enjoying this. <clears throat> now we are going to get into... <clears throat> Again, this is Cosmic Coupling by Starsky and Cox, the same couple, a man and a woman, who wrote and drafted uh, Sextrology, which is that first book that we read, or the, the one we just read. <clears throat> first, we have Aries Man plus Scorpio man. Uh, the writers of the book call it the rub, <laughs> for better or worse. <clears throat> this is an ironic pairing that often falls under the heading, I wasn't looking, but somehow you found me. Both signs claim Mars rulership. While Scorpio is co-ruled by Pluto, which functions like an underground Mars. Aries is obviously Martian. While Scorpio is... Oh, sorry. Aries is obviously Martian, like Mars. Direct, objectifying, aggressive. And Scorpio is subversive, controlling, and calculating. Scorpio tries to get the last laugh rather than the... You know, Scorpio tries to win the battle and doesn't care so much about the, the war instead of the battle. Blah. You know what I mean. Scorpio, therefore, being submiss subversive, controlling, and calculating. Scorpio embodies two sets of means, typically to the same end. In relationships, Aries and Scorpio both like to lead. So, on meeting... They tend to label each other friendship material. That they are. Many Scorpio-Aries bonds make the best plutonic blend ships, in part hinged on an attraction to the same types of guys, especially butch bottoms. Scorpio can be versatile, whilst most Aries skew top, which is why it comes as such a surprise that the ram ends up biting the pillow. <laughs> Compatibility. No matter how deep the commitment becomes, these two share an undeniable and usually unspoken connection. Aries always feels himself the alpha, but here, at least, he's willing to share that status. This is a relationship based on mutual respect and a reciprocal recognition of talents and skills, though they tend to achieve expertise in varying fields, whether creative or career-wise. The more they tie the knot, the more insular they can become. Aries waxes ascetic as time unfolds, Scorpio taking up the reins of plans and projects that previously occupied the Ram's agenda. 
Aries experiences a sense of letting go with, with Scorpio that he enjoys with no one else. Within the Scorpio man's protective web, Aries' existence becomes more zen-like as, as his stealthily domineering partner delegates the bulk of the couple's busy work to any number of minions, things Aries used to do DIY, do it yourself. <clears throat> Now, carnality this is the part where we talk about the juicy stuff. Scorpio likes a challenge, and nothing could take more fortitude than subduing the wild ram, all the while knowing that he has the option of flipping for the Aries, as it pleases them both. Scorpio is bent on pushing a lover to his limits, and Aries won't say uncle easily. Both figures may have a fetish for military or other uber-masculine mil milieus. And let's just say leather is a mainstay of their wardrobe. The more fey variety of Scorpio will typically eschew this coupling, whose usual participants can be like Tom of Finland figures come to life. Not that all these guys are into hardcore sex. That said, Aries and Scorpio probably shop for things like slings more than any other pair. Elements of torture, uh, elements of torture, light or otherwise, can enter the mix, along with large phallic objects and handy tubs of lard. Indeed, sparring might not be the only activity where a strong knuckle sandwich is appreciated. <laughs> Still, no matter how far these two fling themselves out there, the emotional center of their bond still tends to hold. That's cute. I get it, like the sort of dual macho, macho thing. <clears throat> I tend to like Aries men because they're just sort of, they're so go, 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 and you know, they'll play, they'll play the game. They'll, they'll do the sort of like, um, the sort of tomboyish game of like, ah, oh, come on, you suck. And it's like, no, you suck. And then they're both like doing that and it's kind of like cute for each other that way. And it kind of takes, uh, and me as a Scorpio, it's nice to have a man who's like doing that, being virile like that so that I don't have to be the only one doing it. <clears throat> it keeps things light. Now we have Taurus Man with Scorpio Man. <clears throat> this one's called The Leap. Taurus and Scorpio are opposite to each other. Um, but in astrology, we learn that opposites are very much similar to each other, just in opposite directions. Taurus and Scorpio are both fixed signs. They can be fixed in their ways, fixed in their opinions, and they, any partner that deals with them has to deal with that fixedness and sort of smoothing things around at the same time. Because they're both like that, they intuit well how each other are supposed to deal with each other. Uh, and it can be good or bad. Ultimately, everything can be good with the right amount of intention and love. Because it's the love you put in at the details of the material world that ultimately fill in all the spiritual gaps in the soul connection. That's why it's so beautiful to be a human in the material world, to share that kind of dissolving transpersonal love, despite whatever clicks happen at the soul level. <clears throat> now, Taurus Man and Scorpio Man, the leap. Despite an obvious physical attraction, Taurus might feel the Scorpio thinks who the hell he is. I don't understand. Despite an obvious physical attraction, Taurus might feel the Scorpio thinks who the hell he is. Conversely, the Scorpion may find the bull dense and, and uninteresting, thereby miscalculating him. Scorpio may be overtly condescending, fueling Taurus's uneasy impressions of this, the only sign in the zodiac to have multiple totems. 
Uh, so this is saying Scorpio is going to be sort of dismissive of the Taurus. And then Taurus will be, uh, that'll make Taurus's uneasy impression of the Scorpio that much deeper. Now this is saying Scorpio has multiple totems. Scorpion, snake, spider, dragon, phoenix, and eagle. So this is a, a nod to Scorpio's signature venom, his desire for riches, and his knack for reinvention. Fuck, they've confused this, but whatever. When, but Taurus senses Scorpio's complexity, and it entices the Taurus, who may ignore Scorp's icy veneer, and just sort of like, okay, this guy's icy, but what's he got going behind it? Something of a vampire... Scorpio likes fresh, unsuspecting meat, while he assume, which he assumes the bull to be. But he soon realizes that Taurus has unsuspected depth. So the tables start to turn, the bull becoming something of a Scorpio obsession. <clears throat> Compatibility. Sorry if that was weird uh, grammar there. I'm just still working these out. But I think I get it. I kind of see it. The Taurus is interested in why the Scorpio is so complex and deep. And the Scorpio just... Taurus, Taurus is like that kind of on the inside too. Scorpio really wears it on the front. And then it's got a deep depth within it. Taurus is the same. It's got the deep depth. It just doesn't like hide it. You know? <clears throat> Part of why Taurus, Scorpio tends to think Taurus is just like all on the surface because the depth is on the surface with Taurus. The Taurus can sit right here and eat an ice cream cone and just like, and be like so in it that it just seems basic because they're so in the senses. But they can take that and go home and do something and be just as invested in it. It's the depth is just on the surface. That's the only difference, right? <clears throat> Now, compatibility between these two. Prosperity is the common goal for these money-minded fellows, the bond being hinged on helping mastermind shared moguldom. They're both a force to be reckoned with, and together they're a force to be reckoned with. Proverbial power gaze, who are careful of the company they keep. Friends flock to them, Scorpio preferring to have others in his clutches, never being the joiner. Taurus plays good cop here, as Scorpio relies on him to keep outside relationships intact, while he can be his brutally honest self. <laughs> Neither of them hides his desire to succeed, <clears throat> making the most of every possible association. When alone, they plot the newest strategy to raise their profile and boost their bankroll. They must beware of treating others like pawns in their compulsion for increase. They know at the onset that they are entering into an intense bond. Both men are possessive in the extreme. So they close their eyes to the possible pitfalls and jump in. Carnality. Get to the juicy stuff. Let's play master and servant. Scorpio is big into mind control here. And Taurus is first broken down and then built up again to this lover's sexual specifications. The bull is disallowed his usual role of idol, but instead becomes the one doing any such worship, and of a specific kind. Scorpio tends to believe he has a temple below the belt, and Taurus must show he's hopelessly devoted. When things get kinky, it will typically involve some discipline for the bull, who may have to conceal reminders of his lover's power over him, say, underneath his teeny Tom Brown suits. Clamps up top and plugs in the bottom are what many fashionable Taurans will be sporting in this bond. Scorpio is usually a versatile fellow who skews top, so the bull must be prepared to play recipient the bulk of the time, but be ready to flip into dominant mode when directed to do so. As a lover, Scorpio is best described as in your face, which can literally apply to any body part or issue thereof. So grab a towel. 
That's funny. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty hot. I get that uh, the Taurus is this. Mm. Taurus probably likes being this flower of what's being felt, just expressing it and not thinking about it. And Scorpio likes to hold it back and say, now we're going to do this thing. Now we're going to do this thing. And Taurus is like, okay, yeah, sure. I mean, like, you know, I guess. And then, like, it really makes the Scorpio feel like he's getting himself out. And I guess the Taurus likes to let go and be that kind of thing. It's interesting to see it. I mean, it seems to be... It's very interesting. It's like the water's coming down onto the earth. The Scorpio water is pouring and shaping the river canals, shaping the earth with the water. Seems to me what I seem, see in there. Uh, feel free to comment if that's your experience. I often am looking at these texts and considering the context and reminding myself that not every sexual relationship is going to work out perfectly that way because we all have Venus and Mars and the Moon and our rising signs in different signs and it would make things different. But it's nice, it's interesting to see the general rule of thumb for the Sun of these combinations. <clears throat> now the next one we're going to move on to is Gemini Man with Scorpio Man. Fucking hit me with it. S Gemini Man. Fucking do it. <clears throat> I'm just gonna... I figure every, like, two of these I'm gonna just check out for comments and anything like that. In case anyone's watching. Oh, cool. No problem, Goosey. Venus North Node. Venus, North Node, Pluto, and Jupiter, and Scorpio, and the second house with Libra rising. Oh, and yeah, okay, Deshaun, so Venus rules your chart because you're a Libra rising. It's all coming through Scorpio. You'd probably get a lot out of this, and I'm glad that you came on to mention your signs. I'd love to know if you see yourself in these, even though you don't claim to have the sun in Scorpio. I'd love to see what you think. Uh, thank you for contributing. Oh, sorry, Goosey, you asked one more thing here. Does Capricorn have sun? Goosey, I believe you're asking... If you're asking what I think you're asking... <clears throat> the reason that you're... The reason that I say that you're a, a Capricorn, Goosey, is because your sun was in the sign of Capricorn when you were born. I believe your birthday was December 29th. That means that when you were born, your son was in Capricorn. So, Cap your Capricorn for you has the sun in it. But not everyone has the sun in, in Capricorn when they were born. For example, I'm a Scorpio. Because when I was born, the sun was in Scorpio. So the reason I call you a Capricorn is just because you've got the sun in Capricorn. But that doesn't, that's not the only thing you are, Goosey. you got to keep exploring, and you got to not let yourself get crystallized into one thing. Because you have an infinite spirit, and you have a lovely explorative one particular to you. Uh, again, uh, I'm just going to answer questions every like two of these, you know, so feel free to make a comment. Let me know what you think. Now, Gemini Man with Scorpio Man. <clears throat> this is called The Work. <clears throat> Chemistry. Scorpio is naturally suspicious of Gemini, and sometimes the simple reveal of the latter's sign can send the former running for the hills. But it's something of a compliment to the qu twins guy, who isn't as willingly controlled by the scorpion as other signs are. 
probably part of why that's going on. Gemini is wisecracking and too quick to be taken in by Scorpio's constant put-ons and setups. And Scorpio can be distrustful of Gemini, who, to him, seems to be always working at an angle, a specious no notion at least half of the time. Gemini tends not to be impressed with the Scorpio, whose raison d'etre is to be held up in highest esteem. Also, bossy Scorpio gets no satisfaction from Gemini, who fancies himself as the ringleader. That said, there is no lack of sexual tension here, though Gemini brings out the Scorpio's psychological sadistic streak. That's interesting. It's because Gemini, I guess, doesn't like to be that pulled under by Scorpio's spell, and... It's like Scorpio just wants just like a little bit of it most of the time. And if it's just constantly being met with the natural resistance that Gemini is so good at employing, Scorpio is just going to be like, ah, fuck you. Just fucking... Mm. Mm. <laughs> just trying on the roll. <laughs> I would never do that to somebody unless they asked me to. <laughs> now, compatibility. These two guys can be Bickersons. <clears throat> Scorpio feeling he doesn't garner the respect he deserves. And Gemini is unoppressed by the Dragon Lad's superior airs. Scorpio finds Gemini is too attention grabbing. Subconsciously, he doesn't want the competition. Scorpio can be a seemingly low-key character, though pent up on the inside, who lives in a rarefied world of close mover-shaker friends. Gemini, on the other hand, gravitates to a more fun-loving, boisterous crowd, characters whom Scorpio might find boring or, frankly, beneath him. Scorpio likes to know where his lover is at at all times, or rather, he wants a lover who doesn't mind his knowing. Even if not inclined to get up to no good, Gemini will not be kept on that short leash as he sees it. Such dynamics need negotiating in order for this relationship with its myriad challenges to work. If only they could spend their life in bed because I guess they're pretty good in bed. Carnality. <clears throat> Sexually, these guys tend to be suited, the majority of Scorpios... Ah. Sexually, these guys tend to be suited. The majority of Scorpios play a more active sexual role, and Geminis very often skew bottom. Be that as it may, Scorpio likes long sessions, and that makes the more immediate-minded Gemini's heads spin. Heads, plural. Overwhelming Gemini thus becomes a theme of this pair's lovemaking. Scorpio will want to be orally serviced until the twins get lockjaw, and when it comes to anal, Scorpio's infamous staying power will be seen by Gemini as both a blessing and a curse. Scorpio likes to push Gemini to his limit and beyond, which might entail using toys of ever-increasing magnitude on the twins, who will always resist, much to Scorpio's delight. <clears throat> I'll say it again. Scorpio likes to push Gemini to his limit and beyond, which might entail using toys of ever-increasing magnitude on the twins, who will always resist, much to Scorpio's delight. Now I get it. That was hot. Bondage generally abounds, and Scorpio could even dabble in inflicting a little pain, while Gemini is ever ready to shout out their safe word. The twins rarely experience so full a gamut of sensation as he does here, and he will often become addicted to it until suddenly that short leash isn't much of a problem. Hmm, that's kind of cute. Yeah, I get that. I guess I could see it. Scorpio is like thing is to like push beyond the senses. It's just part of what makes Scorpio 
You know, Scorpios are often like, I'm a yoga guy. I like to push myself through the posture. And I just love the tension and pushing through that tension. And that's part of why I think the Scorpio so often gets to be the guy on, you know, the, that top, that domineering position. It's a Mars thing. It's just the feeling of pushing through that resistance is deeply erotic and satisfying and feels natural to the Scorpio, especially because it's coming through the feminine sign, which is closer to the material and sensual and subjective. Uh, and I find Gemini just likes to sit here. This is good. You know, just like to... Gem, if Gem, Gemini could just like float in middle ground orgiastic bliss for as long as possible. And that will bore the Scorpio. And Scorpio just doesn't get bored. Scorpio's like, oh, okay, so this is the flat line. Now how do I push to the next thing? Whereas Gemini's looking for that flat line, and Scorpio's like, mm, mm, come on. And sometimes, as the book suggests, sometimes, you know, Gemini is the Panchatattva Earth. Earth is going, like, down, settling by gravity to make it equanimous. Uh, so Gemini likes sensual peace and equanimity. Of course, we all know that peace uh, is like a water wheel. The water wheel, if the water wheel of peace stops turning, it will rust. True peace has to keep moving. So Gemini is trying to find these ways of staying at peace, but also rocking the boat just enough so that there's a rhythm and so that it doesn't just become one with its hot tub and disappear forever. <laughs> That's just a Gemini thing, you know. Just Gemini can get locked in sensation forever, which is hot. But Scorpio is like this thing that's like, you know, like, why don't I just push you just a little tiny bit there? And as the book says, typically the Gemini appreciates that so long as they find a loving balance. And if, you know, if they love each other and if they find a deep enough emotional connection, then they'll, they'll meet in the middle. That's what I'm trying to transmit through all these, is that if you really love somebody, no matter what these sexual archetypes come out as, you'll be able to meet them in the middle. Especially if the other planets and archetypes in your mutual charts add up harmoniously. We're just talking about the sun here, let's remember. Again, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm having a lot of fun going about it. Uh, now we're on to Cancer Man with Scorpio Man. I'm excited for this one. Because uh, <clears throat> Scorpio and Cancer are trying. Uh, I've never really been with any Cancer guys. And I've just been dying to. <clears throat> uh, but I've been with Cancer girls. And it's deeply ugh, awesome. So let's see how this turns out. <clears throat> Cancer Man plus Scorpio Man. This is called The Berg. Whatever that means. <laughs> the Iceberg? I don't know. <clears throat> Chemistry, actually. I'm just a quick drink here. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, chemistry. There is an exalted quality <clears throat> to the relationship between Cancer and Scorpio <clears throat> from the beginning. Cancer and Scorpio <clears throat> are similar in many ways both secretly plotting dreams and coops. In youth, they especially don't end up connecting, being on rather parallel trajectories, reliant on more patronizing partners. But if they meet at a time in their lives when they're semi-established, whatever that means, they just might start a dialogue. Fast friends, it's, can it's cancer who will first launch furtive glances, of which Scorpio may be unaware. Scorpio can find the crab a bit green or goofy, but in time he sees Cancer's perceptive depth and his suave social cool. Still, Scorpio may give him the holdup, staving off intimacy. 
It's all cancer can do to not break into tears when they finally do can get it on. Then, even with a stick, he can't beat off Scorpio. <laughs> it's all cancer can do to p but to not break into tears when they finally do get it on when they finally do get together the, ca the cancer just like lets go and releases and Scorpio is secretly emotional like that too so what this is meant to say is once that happens you can't beat the Scorpio off with a stick off of the cancer person because the Scorpio will be so deeply connected to the cancer person for tying up at that level. And they'll probably be beating each other off too. <laughs> okay, compatibility. <clears throat> These two guys like their downtime. And, unless duty calls, they eschew socializing for the comfort of home or their corner haunt. They also don't necessarily form friendships with the mover shakers they continually meet in the professional world. Cancer can be community minded, but even that will be somewhat kept in a box. Scorpio is concerned with living a quality life, which doesn't always translate into the creature comforts that Cancer craves. Even their home might reflect this divided as it may be into separate areas for each. They can seem like a couple of straight bachelors living together. But for those not except for those nocturnal sounds. Generally sporty, inspiring more of that spirit in each other. These guys may exer make exercise a big part of their life. Otherwise spent sampling any number of earthly delights. <clears throat> Both being very sensual. Now, <clears throat> let's get to the juicy part. <clears throat> this is carnality. With notable exceptions, Scorpio skews top, and again, generally speaking, Cancer opens like a steamed clam. <laughs> These are two exceptionally sexual beings who celebrate gayness by experiencing every corner of it before going deep into d indulging any one set of desires. That said, this can be a fetishy fellowship. Not that the secret handshake utilizes the fist exactly, but let's just say that the Crisco set is no stranger to men of these signs. I don't know what the Crisco set is, so I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> Scorpio can be a real in-your-face sexual encounter. And Cancer's right there wearing a smile, if not the inevitable outcome of Scorpio's libido on his face. He, for one, likes a good rimming, and the crab is ready to scuttle right on in. Scorpio won't not reciprocate, but the general dynamic here is Scorpio's the master, and Cancer his underling, Dracula and Renfrew, which really doesn't do Cancer justice. The crab is a loving character who can par participate emotionally, even getting gang-banged. Indeed, Scorpio might like to share his lover with others, maybe strangers, something which, ironically, only strengthens this most psychological of bonds. Hmm. That's what I figured, is that this one would come out more psychologically. Um, because they're both emotional people, they're both water signs, cancer being the the uh, cardinal water sign ruled by the moon. Um, and Mars and the moon have a deep connection in general, because the moon inside of all of us needs Mars to express its needs. When the moon has needs, Mars ex expresses it. So I could see this relationship having a thing where Scorpio likes to be the one who can get cancer what cancer sort of needs. Um, and by showing that, Scorpio becomes the, the power source, the one to be knelt to, so to say. Even though, I guess, cancer probably is so emotionally aware that cancer will 
be like will tell Scorpio psychically like I still want to I don't want to be your bitch I, I, and cancer well it's not even that he doesn't need to transmit it cancer will find a place in himself that has a strength it's an internal emotional strength that Scorpio will admire and having the vulnerability and freedom and sense of deep self to cry for the Scorpio and with the Scorpio and Scorpio will be like crying inside and like you know find it super cute and just like delicious in that just deep psychological emotional connective way <clears throat> and I like that the cancer guy would be I do know some cancer guys and they're really like awesome they're very um, unafraid of their emotions Although they can be afraid of them, but once they get a sense of themselves, they're very in it, and they're just so willing to wear whatever, and it's just like, no matter what, it's going to be okay, because the moon can adapt. It's a nice thing for Scorpio. <clears throat> it's like a strength, but it's not like going to get in the way of the strength that Scorpio hopes to hold over them. It's not an external, it's not necessarily an extrinsically external strength. It's an internal strength that Scorpio loves while still kind of being the external strength person. <clears throat> cancer can always adapt. Or at least Cancer loves to adapt for Scorpio because Scorpio does ultimately listen. <laughs> and is emotionally in tune. And they both create the space for each other to be their thing. And that's cute. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just like hair doifying myself here. Uh, so that was two. Next up, we've got Leo and Scorpio Man. Just checking out some comments here to see if anybody's made any comments. Drum roll, please. Oh, damn it. Oh, my God, I hate this. <sighs> Sorry, folks. I just got to sign myself back into the YouTube comments. I have to do this every damn time. Well, I really don't. I just pressed the wrong button. So, I appreciate your patience. Yeah, yeah. I hate having to do this. Okay, here we go. Fuck, I better not have good. Sweet. Okay. <clears throat> no problem, Goosey. So I'm just looking at our comments here. Uh, we're going to keep going forward. I just like to peek at these comments, see if there's anything I can answer right away. Yeah, that's true, Liv. Uh, the Vedic astrology considers Capricorn to be the crocodile because they just will go for what will ultimately keep them evolving even if they're like a cro crocodiles are like some of our oldest existing creatures because they just know that what they have to do with themselves in relationship to reality in order to survive the longest that's like a crocodile <clears throat> Capricorn by Motorhead. That's interesting. Lemmy is a Capricorn. Wow, cool. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Damn, that's rock and roll. Uh, I'm just reading this, and it's interesting that there's a song by Motorhead called Capricorn. And Lemmy, the bass player, was a Capricorn, and he was also the singer. Hmm. In my punk band, my brother, I play with my brother, and he's a Gemini. He made a song called Gemify. Uh, and it's the same sort of thing. <laughs> like, just him talking about Gemini. It's pretty cool. It's all like, I can't make up my mind and all this stuff. Uh, what I will say, Liv, is that I see where you're at with Gemini. Always consider that you might find, like, if you met, like, a Gemini sun person, but whose ascendant was, like cancer and their moon was in like Pisces and you know they had all these things that would keep them more in tune and give them more depth 
you never know. You might enjoy the Gemini in somebody. I'm always trying to give context for these readings because it's only one reading of one planetary archetype. And as I always like to say, no matter how the sun archetypes come out, if the other parts of the chart are harmonious to one another, and you really deeply love the person you're dealing with, the love, the transpersonal love, will get through the ripples in the material world because there's a deeper soul connection, if that is there. Finding out what makes that is a whole other fun thing. The journey continues, folks. I'm sure after I've had lots and lots of love relationships, I'll be interested in talking about that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm going to talk about the slutty stuff, because that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> I haven't had as many long relationships as I would like. I mean, I don't know, some part of me really understands this Scorpio thing of like, having a, just a little sexual thing here, not getting too deeply connected with it because I'm saving myself for another one in the long run. Although I have had some. I fell deeply in love with a girl in Michigan. And that has... You never know you're in love until it's gone. And, like, that relationship is rip, ripples divine positivity in my life wherever I go. Even though we're done. And for good reason. It wasn't, it wasn't perfect. Um, but I have the capacity to love deeply, and when I do, I deeply love too. So, you know, just giving you guys context here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next up, we have Leo Sun Man with Scorpio Sun Man. We call it the feel. <laughs> That's interesting. Funny, you could kind of see both of these in me because I'm a Leo rising and my son is in Scorpio. And believe me, if I could clone myself and fuck myself, you bet your ass I would. So let's see how that relationship would go, would go by reading this. <clears throat> Leo son, Scorpio son, the feel. Both of these men seek to put a whammy on a potential lover, breeding obsession instead of being in active pursuit. So someone has to budge, and it's usually Scorpio who will make the first move, however unwillingly. Excuse me. Scorpio wants to align himself with whomever he labels a winner. And as gay Leo is typically on a fast track, Scorpio is intrigued. The lion finds the scorpion to be a stabilizing force, a role in which the latter is rarely cast. But he will admit, the Scorpio will admit, that Leo brings out dormant nurturing instincts. At times, this can be unnerving for Scorpio, who, for attention, may sulk instead of cheerlead. Leo doesn't much verbalize his feelings, and, if pressed, he could retreat completely. Scorpio is wise to dangle himself a bit after making intentions known. Shows of confidence are a major turn-on for cocky Leo. Now, compatibility. Leo and Scorpio tend to have a business-like bond. Often, they meet in a professional, se professional setting or otherwise feel... <clears throat> Often, Leo and Scorpio meet in a professional setting or otherwise feel a need to keep things formal, if only for a while. They are helpful to each other, mutually consulting or making contracts and contacts on the other's behalf. Like all pairings of these signs, there's a sense of confronting one's own demons via interaction. <laughs> Therefore, they can expect a roller coaster of moods, loving and seemingly loathing each other at turns, negative emotions being mainly projection. 
They're both fixed signs, and they're square to each other. Uh, Mars and Sun are both masculine, active, ego, macho planets. And so that's where this is coming from. They might see negative emotions, and they're projecting it from inside themselves. Because they're both so macho, it's... I mean, Scorpio probably read... Is, Scorpio's macho ruled by Mars, but it's feminine, so it'll read what's going on. But just because Scorpio sees that the Leo is just nothing but an eye, sometimes the world revolves around just Leo. And Scorpio has the sense to see that, but that Scorpio knowing it is not going to change it. So Scorpio is going to try to do the whole, you know, I'll win this battle, but I'm going to win the war type of vibe. You know, Scorpio will find some way to ultimately show Leo that, you know, it's cute that you're in your own little a world unto yourself, but don't fuck with me. <laughs> Scorpio will make that known somehow. And if Leo, if they really love each other, Scorpio will make that known, and they'll learn to communicate better. Communication is always the best way to deal with things. Leo, <laughs> give that a listen, <clears throat> says Scorpio. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's get going here. <clears throat> so, they, so, blah, 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 they can expect a roller coaster, since they're both fixed signs, both deeply fixed and macho, they can expect a roller coaster of moods, loving and seemingly loathing each other at turns, negative emotions being mainly projection. Scorpio comes from a sad place, generally having been ignored or dealt with out of hand as a child. Leo's experience is typically the opposite, hailed as a hero mainly by his mother. Scorpio usually has a cold, withholding, or absent mother. He constantly tries to rise to the occasion of life, while the over-encouraged Leo is managing expectations. <clears throat> the over-encouraged Leo is managing expectations. <clears throat> cool. Now let's get into the juicy part. This is carnality. That dynamic, uh, cold Scorpio, too cold Scorpio, too hot Leo, that dynamic can follow these fellows into the bedroom, where Scorpio feels a great well of affection that wants expressing via sex. And the overloaded Leo seeks to keep it light. Activities like spooning, which achieves both goals, tend to take on the status of a monumental sexual position. Indeed, as everything develops so slowly between these two, they may enjoy a romantic relationship for some time before anything more than touching occurs. This has a great healing effect for Scorpio, who often sexualized early in life, and not completely by choice, needs to fill in some gaps, learning to relate to a lover first from the heart, not just from their lower head, the lingam level. The ticker is ruled by the sign of Leo. He is his passions of every kind. An experience tells him that he is burned through boyfriends by overwhelming them in every way. Sexually, this should give Scorpio something to look forward to. First come love, then the most powerfully vanilla sex on the planet. Hmm. That's kind of cool. I guess the Leo learns eventually how to not burn a person, but to still keep up this heated thing, the center of the universe, and like, yeah, I guess you could come along type thing. And Scorpio learns how to teach the Leo to communicate and to be fair in its own quiet way, if and when these two do get to that exalted level of the relationship, and if their love between each other is that deep enough. It's kind of hot. I 
and everything developing slowly between these the two of them as it does. I'm just trying to think because I don't think of I've, I've never really been with another Leo guy either, although you can I've seen Leo guys and I, I don't know I got Leo rising myself and there's just part of me you know projects it and you know everyone has seen a Leo guy because just the way they are you can just know how they are and it's enchanting as a Scorpio guy I find it deeply enchanting that you know they're almost not even thinking so much about this role play thing like Scorpio is and me as a Scorpio, just thinking about it, like I think of like, like I think about it so much, bearing on these archetypes is what I'm saying. You know, I think about it a lot. And the Leo guy is just rocking and rolling and doing his own thing and not thinking about it so much. And so it's just naturally comes off as powerful and domineering in its way, but he's not trying. Scorpio does try. This guy has just been encouraged all his life in childhood, usually, as this says. Unless you have a weak sun, you know, always consider the context of all the other planets involved. But generally, sun in Leo has a strong sun because sun, the sun is its own in its own sign, right? So that tends to be a very good thing. Uh, and especially, it develops a sense of for how the sun is supposed to be. Leo is in Scorpio's 10th house. So the Scorpio doesn't always have the strongest son, naturally. The son is like a father figure to Scorpio, for better or worse, in this relationship. Uh, so the Scorpio can definitely be, like, undermined or whatever. But generally, it's like... Uh, the Leo person, because they're not even thinking about it so much. Man, why are you thinking about it so much? I'm just what I am, and it's just whatever. And that gives the Scorpio the sense of, like, you know, fuck thinking about it. I'm just, I want to be like that too, kind of. Uh, but the Scorpio is the fourth house from Leo. Four signs after Leo. So the fourth house is more of a moon vibe. So Scorpio will teach Leo by loving it. The fourth house is a loving vibe, and it's like, I'll, I'll love you no matter what. Just quit being so much of yourself, you know? It's like your mother. Your mother says, I love you no matter what, but you got to calm this down. Just because it's better for everybody if you're not so much of this, for better or worse. Scorpio, Leo has an okay relationship with its mother, usually. So Scorpio will say to Leo, I, I love you so much, and I don't want to let go of what you, so much of what you give to me. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do this. You gotta make sure that you don't burn me this way in front of our friends, you know? And Scorpio, Leo can get as much out of Scorpio as Scorpio can get out of Leo. In my estimation. <clears throat> now, that was psychological, and, you know, it seems that I'm going between super sexy carnality and psychology and behavioral whatever as i always like to say if the two signs really love each other if these two people really love each other they can find a peace even with these weird squares between the suns right no matter what the sun relationship is you can always find harmony in other parts of the chart and fill in the sand with your love for each other in the material world. <clears throat> Anybody can fall in love. <clears throat> if you really want to go there with it. Although I'm I'm a Scorpio. I I'm into the libido and like, you know, these connections do count. Just the point is is that if you're reading this and you got a Scorpio lover and you're a Leo and you see anything negative, it can always be transversed. If the love is there. <clears throat> now, Virgo man, Scorpio man. This is called the scrutiny. Chemistry. <clears throat> there is a lurid attraction here between Virgo and Scorpio. Even if occurring in a bright and shiny environment, 
<clears throat> lurid meaning kind of dark and mmm, damn. It's typically Virgo who first sends out signals, employing innuendo to varying degrees of finesse or success. The bait he hopes Scorpio might the bait he hopes Scorpio takes might make it clear in no uncertain terms that Virgo isn't looking for a carriage ride through the park or any other picture postcard date, but something a little darker and more devious. Scorpio senses it and dangles himself slowly, secretly turning on to the Virgin's advances while driving him wild in the process. Virgo may even resort to tricks to get Scorpio to go out with them. For instance, inviting him out on the premise of a group gathering only for Scorpio to show up and realize it's a party for two. Scorpio may subsequently play jokes on Virgo, a harmless form of Scorpio's trademark mind control. <clears throat> Compatibility. I guess I should say this is a matching of Mercury and Mars, just like it was for Scorpio and Gemini. But the feminine nature of Virgo, the sensual, earthy nature of Virgo, makes this a lot more appreciable, I think. This, this combination works better than Gemini and Scorpio. And there's a similarity in the sense that Virgo... Virgo feels the same like, excuse me, I'm burping black. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury represents the Earth Panchatattva. Uh, so it's kind of like, it, the Panchatattvas are the, the pentagram, the five elements that relate with each other. And uh, Earth is like falling down by gravity. And this is especially true because Virgo is also like an Earth sign, so... Uh, gravity makes the Virgos tend to look for equanimity. The Virgo tries to find neurological peace in itself, and it likes to have peaceful environment with clean... They're, this is why they're attached to being clean. Uh, they're like that obsessive clean freak that we hear so much about, the tidiness, whatever. Uh, and because they are... The, it's the sun energy, so they consciously perpetuate that, but every sunlight also has a shadow. So... They're trying to be this cleanness on the surface, and it always bubbles up as this dirty, dank, deviant little slut <laughs> on the inside for, for Virgo. Uh, and they love when someone invites that little slut out to put on those like cute little outfits and whatever Virgo is going to wear uh, to make them let it out, because part of cleaning up dirt is having dirt to clean up. Virgo just loved to see this thing come out, and then it's like, whoo, whoo, my, good thing that got out of the way. <laughs> and Scorpio just loves to be the one that just sees those little, un it's like it's unconscious for Virgo, although it is conscious, and they just want to see, like, what are you going to bring out of me, Mr. Scorpio? And Scorpio loves to be in that position. Oh, don't you want me to do it for you? <clears throat> now, compatibility. If Virgo manages to be more upfront and patient, allowing Scorpio to believe it's at least as much his idea to get together as it is Virgo's, then they might have a fighting chance. Because Virgo, again, is tends to be the one who's just like, yeah, let's get the thing going already. And Scorpio doesn't. Scorpio tends to want what it can't have. Doesn't like weakness. It does. It likes to be the strong one, but it likes their. It doesn't want. Scorpio doesn't want to feel like it's got a parasite sucking on it, you know? Uh, so the Virgo has to be that sluttiness, but not so much that Scorpio doesn't have to work for it at least a little bit. So Virgo must avoid throwing himself at the serpent guy, who, despite popular belief, isn't seeking some guy who looks like he just stepped out of rawhide or fill in the blank with a hardcore leather bar near you. 
but rather Scorpio is looking for a smart, funny, and more wholesome type of fellow with whom he can be the knowing character, by contrast. The knowing character. It's on this score that Virgo often misses the mark. Then again, if he's looking for a quick something, or a series thereof, perhaps, then by all means, Virgo might blatantly signal purely sexual interest. Otherwise, given a scenario that sees them entering a relationship, there will always be something of a disconnect, a leading of separate lives, and a continued sense of searching. Especially more you know, if, if they if the Virgo gives it all away right away, you know. And the funny thing is is Scorpio's this weird thing where like Scorpio will be like look, you're either gonna connect with me in a slutty, you know, blow and go or it's gonna be something deeper. And if the Virgo just gives just like oh like the Virgo will say, How about we start it off with a blow and go? And then maybe you'll like me more and feel more comfortable. And then Scorpio does the blow and go and said, you know, gets it and then just, okay, thanks. And he might think about it a little bit, but because it was a blow and go, that intention is deeply rooted in Scorpio's consciousness forever. And then like the Virgo comes along and says, hey, you know, so maybe we should hang out again. And Scorpio does not respond. <laughs> Unless the Virgo teases the Scorpio, right? doesn't give it all right away because Scorpio and Virgo can be a great match um, especially if the Virgo has like another let's say like an earth moon complementing the earth sun then the Virgo will stick it out for the long run if they really like the Scorpio they'll have the capacity to because they're looking for the long run and Scorpio will be even more enriched by the earth moon of the Virgo <clears throat> now, carnality. The juicy stuff. Virgo is determined to be the love or sept sex object in this relationship, which can be a tall order since it's generally he who has command commandeered it in the first place. Typically, Scorpio is the more active figure, if not an overwhelmingly domineering one. As this is most often a purely sexual bond, the particulars of their carnal connection can be what keeps it together. Archetypally, this combination lends itself perfectly to master-slave and sadomasochistic dynamics. Of all gay couplings, this can be one of the raunchiest as well, with Virgo cast in the pig ear of roles. It might be easier to formulate a short list of what these characters wouldn't get up to in the extreme. But suffice to say, there are off they are often present in dark rooms and dungeons. That they know their way around private sex parties on any number of scantily clad themes. And that they are valued customers at establishments specializing in hoods, ball gags, masks, and slings just as they might host shiny events of the season in New York City, East Hampton, or Sobe. I guess these are places where big leather bondage type things happen out in the open. It's interesting that I would connect that Scorpio is in Virgo's third house. That's sort of this very much like Gemini is the third house. Virgo is also ruled by Gemini, so having Scorpio in the third house from Virgo means that there's a material item, like the third house is like your mental mind. It's your items, it's your skills, it's items that you've learned can get you farther and do things with, it's Mercury gadgets, etc. So all these little accoutrements, all these little bonds and gags and binds and all these things that the two of them fall to using on each other become an important part of the thing. Uh, and then I was going to say the whole private sex party thing. Uh, Virgo is in Scorpio's 
11th house, right? If you start at Scorpio, go all the way around, Virgo is 11 signs from Scorpio. So that, for me, says something to the nature of this sex party thing, where they like to go with each other, especially because this typically tends to not be the deeper bond. And if it is the deeper bond, I don't know how that would play out, but if Virgo is being a nice little friend with benefits slut for Scorpio, the two of them might frequent these sex parties and they'll love to get with each other and to show off what they got and it'll make them bigger social connections because that's like what 11th house, that's what Virgo does for Scorpio. Where Scorpio allows Virgo to get a better sense of Virgo's own mind and capacities and abilities with the third house vibe. Ah, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But yeah, that was kind of cool. I've been with the Virgo vibe. Dressing up like a maid for me and those kinds of things. And that's pretty hot. <laughs> and I could see the I could see the possibility for a deep connection with a Virgo. For me personally, uh, again, I've got like Venus in Virgo and Jupiter in Virgo. So I I think I could I could stick it out with the long run for with a Virgo person. Especially I've known someone with Virgo sun and a Virgo moon, and uh, I deeply loved I I could see myself deeply loving someone like that. <clears throat> so, as usual, always take the other things into consideration, other parts of the, the chart, when reading about these surface qualities of the sun sign relationships. Now that was two, so I'm just going to take a little look at our YouTube comments here. Feel free, if you're watching, to leave a comment and we'll add it to our discussion. My friend Goosey, we've got a little thread here talking about Capricorns. And I know Jimmy Page was one. That sexy bastard. David Bowie was a Cap. Elvis Presley and John Paul Jones. Hmm. I think Jimmy Page... No, he was a Capricorn, yeah. And so was John Paul Jones. Two Capricorns. That made Led Zeppelin. That's very interesting. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, I've heard that too, Rose Kelly. My my face has always been good. I mean, like, I got a bit of acne sometimes every now and then, but I'm usually pretty clean and clear and under control. I think it's just because I got a lot of Virgo, and I got Jupiter and Venus in my second house, which would clean out your face usually. So I've heard. Uh, yeah, so if anybody's watching, you can always feel free to lend a comment to our YouTube comment section to spice up the conversation. Now, we're going to get to Libra Man and Scorpio Man, but I'm going to go to the bathroom first, just because uh, I've been going for a bit. So I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, folks. <clears throat> Thank you for remaining with me. You're still watching uh, How to Rock Spirits episode of Gay Scorpio Male Sun. <clears throat> we are now at the part of our adventure where we've gone halfway through the zodiac. Now we are at Scorpio Gay Male with Libra, gay male, son. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> now, our book by Starsky and Cox calls this combination the epicenter. 
Libra is ruled by Venus. It's an active air sign, cardinal sign. Scorpio being ruled by Mars, fixed water. Chemistry. <clears throat> In youth, Scorpio tends to eat Librans for breakfast. If only, thinks, uh, if only, thinks Libra. But they ha uh, these two have an uneasy time of it at first, as the serious-minded Scorpio tends to label Libra somewhat vacant. As time goes on, however, Scorpio finds ethereal Libra to also be a man of substance, a principled character with best intentions, if not great expectations. The Scales Boy might have deep feelings for Scorpio, but laughs them off at first, being unavoidably stung by Scorpio at some point or another, or frozen out with a signature silent treatment on Scorpio's part. The truth is that even a so-called straight Scorpio has his emotions stirred by the often androgynous Libra. Love for these two is almost beyond gender. Regardless of sexual identities, these men often form a lifelong bond that is, at its core, only partly platonic. Compatibility. Typically, these are guys who cannot live together. There would have to be some other factors in their individual charts to counteract that basic fact. Scorpio sets the tone for his environment and a lover more <clears throat> Scorpio sets the tone for his environment and a lover more or less gets shuffled around with the rest of the furniture with some men that works with others Scorpio can actually cohabitate dividing the space into separate pods but Libra likes to have full run of his environment more a minimalist, the Libra. <clears throat> Libra needs to live his Apollonian vision, while Scorpio's world is darker and more purposefully decayed, if not decadent. Actually, Libra and Scorpio strive towards temperance in life. Libra is more susceptible to earthly pleasures, thereby indulging less. While Scorpio can be a party animal and not display the effects until one day he just clumps. Libra and Scorpio have a better chance being in a committed bond later in their lives. <laughs> After they've both matured a bit and refined the edges of their extremes, I suppose. Carnality. <clears throat> Generally speaking, Scorpio takes the lead here, but it's debatable if he gets to keep it. Though the Scales boy, Libra, might possess certain lust for Scorpio, something often stops him from acting on it. Scorpio needs to possess a lover, and he may find Libra too contrary to allow that to happen. Libra inspires protective feelings in the Scorpio, will literally try to engulf him. Sorry, I just got loudness upstairs. I'm probably going to have to bug them at some point. <clears throat> Sorry. Libra inspires protective feelings in the Scorpio, who will literally try to engulf the Scorpio. But it is something like trying to catch light in your hands. Libra isn't touchy-feely by nature. And Scorpio is used to draping himself on and around a lover. If they ever get down to it, they'll find they're more sexually compatible than suspected. Libra will give it up to the spider, expressing a passivity. But the scales typically won't allow himself to be restrained or blindfolded or otherwise more literally controlled. Libra likes sex to be uplifting and not ever a degrading experience. Scorpio understands that, but wants to be the one deciding when to draw the fine lines. Libra has a hard time rel relinquishing such power. 
remember from Taurus and Libra relationship, Taurus is a bit more earthy, a bit more connected to the subconscious, and erotically connected to the subconscious, and closes his eyes and lets Scorpio feel out those lines for both of them. And Scorpio crosses it, and Taurus is like, oh yeah, I feel where you're at. And, oh boy, wow, that was something, and you know, they get a good erotic play out of that. Uh, the Libra, I could see, has an exalted, again, it depends on other things in the chart, you know, but the Libra, I could see, generally has a more exalted Apollonian, yeah, I get it, like, uh, uplifting experience. That's an interesting way to put it. Especially because Libra isn't touchy-feely by nature. Libra try, probably tries to make it this glorious, loving, so beautiful thing with his hands on the heart, and, or on the heart from behind, or whatever. Trying to make it this beautiful, loving, and emotional thing. And Scorpio does love that, too. But Scorpio likes to be like, we're in the black and we're in the white together. And we're going to get through our subliminal impulses together and even love them, you know? Libra has a harder time dealing with those things in a funny sort of way. Although they can, and they'll see it more logically and intuitively, Libra. Um... Libra's just more on the surface. Libra just likes to actually just serve and to be shown in the light of everybody. It's the sun in the west, as opposed to Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars, just like Scorpio, so it does things for itself, and it gets glory because of that. Libra, Libra's actually a weird place for the sun in general, because the sun uh, and Venus, Venus is an enemy to the sun. Uh, the sun is the king of the universe, it's the center of the world, uh, and the king generally doesn't like to have to concede to the market or to others. The king does best in the role of a king when it's delegating authority. Libra is not one to delegate, so to say. Libra does things generally for other people, and so the sun has a harder time expressing itself through Libra because Libra is trying to be seen as this sort of good boy, you know? Uh, and Scorpio, if Scorpio loves the Libra, Scorpio will let that happen. And Scorpio just wants to be deeply connected in lust and love with his partner in general. But it would be good for the Libra to give, to communicate with the Scorpio, and to give the, if you're a Libra and you've got a Scorpio, give them some room to kind of feel like, in the same way we talked about with the Taurus, like the Scorpio likes to bring you into this dark world, and oh gee, you know, like, like, Libra's Mr. Nice Guy, Nice Boy, likes to be seen as good by everybody. And when they get sexy together, it'd be good for the Libra to open to the possibility of Scorpio being the dark prince that br brings you down to this little level of degradation uh, to let you explore your dark side consciously, you know, let the Scorpio be that thing. And the Scorpio will love... The Scorpio will just love that you made that communication and the connection and let him sort of do it a little bit and just sort of like, you know, do these funny little things and these these things that make the Scorpio feel like he can express that side of himself. And then the Scorpio, if he loves you enough, will see that you made the connection and the intention and will give that back if you're both ideally loving and can figure this out in the evolutionary way. If your Scorpio is an eagle and not a scorpion, so to say. That's just my thoughts any old way.
there is some, an interesting thing available there. I mean, Libra is the twelfth house from Scorpio, and that's why Scorpio. It's a dimension that Scorpio doesn't usually deal with. Scorpio doesn't care about what's on the surface of things usually. They just want to get right down into the tension and the transformation and the fusion at the deepest libidinal levels and to play with that tension on the surface of things. So the Libra world is Scorpio's 12th house and Scorpio, if Scorpio opens his heart to this relationship, the Libra can give the Scorpio a deep feeling of peace that the Scorpio is not used to dealing with. Like, it's okay for a Scorpio to deal in the regular social spheres of out in the of being out in the light, of being out in society, and being out and being social, and being conscripted to the world's formulas and laws, the, Ap the Apollo, as we say. Uh, the Apollonian rules of things. Scorpio can do well with that if he opens himself to it, and Libra is the door to that twelfth house. And in turn, Scorpio is the second house from Libra, which I would say means that, well, Scorpio can help the Libra develop something that's not just itself, but can cultivate, yeah, let me think, emotional resort. Libra can cultivate itself emotionally by the way Scorpio is. Scorpio being so deep, Scorpio will help the Libra find those values in itself, which it can find, which it can fixate on. Second house, I'm thinking Taurus vibe. Scorpio is the Taurus vibe for Libra, so Scorpio's way will help is necessary for Libra to get a, a strong sense of fixation of itself not just being ruled by what everyone else thinks that's the Libra's way what does everyone else think I have to do because that's how it just naturally thinks of things Scorpio will explore that and help subconsciously help the Libra to get a sense of what it can cultivate outside of that willingness to be pulled in by everyone else in society and it helps Libra it, I mean Scorpio cultivates an identity a single identity and that's something Libra needs for its second house <clears throat> yeah I'm hopefully you guys are seeing that I'm I, I learn a lot just by talking about these things and so I'm often just trying to air them out in my head so thank you for your patience in that regard, listening to me do that. <clears throat> Hopefully you're still getting something out of this dialogue between Libra and Scorpio. And between me looking at the archetypes in my head. But yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get on to two Scorpio men. This is something I've played with. Uh, I can't wait. I haven't read this yet. Um... And this one is just interesting because it's a one first house relationship to each other. So let's see how it comes out. <clears throat> Scorpio man with Scorpio man. As I said, if I could clone myself and fuck myself and be a part of myself, that would be super rock and roll. Let's and <laughs> I can't wait to see what it'd be like to be gay with myself. <laughs> let's see how that turns out. <laughs> So, the book calls the double Scorpio signature, uh, calls it the preoccupation. Scorpio men like and respect one another, but they generally go for their opposite character, light and breezy types, for relationship material. Still, there are exceptions, and what bonds them, if only as friends, is their dark and superior demeanors. They are like vampires, living among us unnoticed, save for by others of their kind. Scorpio is very conscious of his standing, professionally and socially, and he likes to dip in and out of various scenes, 
as if unseen, never making a spectacle of himself. Even when a couple, they tend to go in opposite directions upon entering a room. Being naturally secretive, two Scorpios might not even reveal to others that they're in a relationship. Besides, a private fling has that extra dose of illicitness, which these creatures of the shadows duly appreciate. Compatibility. In order for it to work, these guys' lives must not much intersect. Being so ambitious and single-minded, working solo or being in complete charge, as is their habit, there's thus little danger of too much togetherness. Still, when a Scorpio blows his own day's end work whistle, he wants the option of having a lover who is a consummate listener on call. Scorpio can't easily be all ears. And if he is, he certainly expects to offer advice and see it implemented. But it's highly unlikely that he'll keep any other counsel but his own. And you can see why this could be a problem here. It's like, you know, if one is going to consider himself the one who listens, you know, the, the bull that's receiving, you know, the cup who's receiving or whatever, you're still a Scorpio, and so you're going to hope that, like, it, you being the listener, you you want to have the psychological standing as one who's still powerful in the relationship, and so you'll say, well, good, okay, so you've, I'm being this guy, so here's my response to what you just said. And if the macho Scorpio says, oh, great, you were listening, good. Now I'm not going to change or nothing, I just wanted you to be my bitch, and that was that, so... You better be okay with me not listening to your response to what I said. I just want someone to... The macho Scorpio said, I just wanted someone to listen. And you fulfilled that. Great. Now don't tell me what to do. And that's frustrating for both, right? <clears throat> so home life can be especially tense unless these guys agree to stick to their own quarters endowing their separate spaces with their individual talismans and vibrations. But chances for true happiness are slim, because Scorpio wants a lover to be wrapped up in his world. So there will be probably be some kind of understanding, an open arrangement, when these two shack up. Some kind of arrangement that's probably well spoken of and understood. Because when two Scorpios to come together and they're like, okay, well, maybe we'll try it, and they don't communicate, mm, so there can be some trouble there. Scorpios are actually slow to enter into relationships, but they can have purely sexual arrangements with a handful of people in regular rotation over the course of many years. Honestly, that is probably the most frequent manifestation of the double Scorpio bond. Just a thing that they like get together and it's like, mm, uh, and it's super there. And then it's like, whew, okay, that was cool. I got to be away from this for a little while. And then they come back years later and it's just like, bang, it's just as fresh and hot. And then they leave again. It's almost like just this, the first house recharging itself <laughs> or something, you know, it's kind of cool. <clears throat> Kissing, spooning, and rubbing bodies together top their erotic hit list. And once they're warmed up, there's no stopping the flow these typically sinewy serpents get up to. They are decidedly unsqueamish and enjoy body scents and other such emanations. Armpits hold special appeal, and their oral repertoire typically involves rimming. I like to get it. I'm not a big fan of doing it, but if you're all cleaned up, rock and roll. <laughs> if both men are versatile, they might take turns tying each other up or employing, employing blindfolds for added extra control and that all-important Scorpio element of surprise. 
The biggest turn on for Scorpio is confidence. And both these guys are self-assured in the sack and proud of their bodies. Having sex in secret outdoor places or even behind a closed door at a party imparts a thrill. Mm. I can see that being fun. Mm. Excuse me. Oh, I got all the burps today. Yeah, that's a hot one. I get it. I, I see why this is hot. And it, it makes me feel like, you know, like what I was... <laughs> that was this cool. I was just talking about it'd be sweet to be able to fuck myself and have a relationship with myself. But it'd be too much of... Too much of something, I feel. Again, unless there's... I've I've gone out with a girl. One of, one of my deepest relationships was with a girl, Scorpio. And we we're very similar. But because of the other points of our charts... It was a relationship that worked out very well. She was a Taurus rising, and so my Scorpio son was with her son in Scorpio in her seventh house. Uh, we had other good things going on, and it was beautiful. So always consider, once again, the other things in a chart. If you're with the Scorpio guy, it's still, it's got its potentials. You know, you just got to watch out for these little flags. That's all. <clears throat> Let's see. Capricorn. What the heck? Scorpio. I'm looking for Scorpio and Sagittarius. Ah, here we go. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> So that was two. As I said, we're gonna read two combinations and then take a peek at our YouTube comments, see if we've got any interesting stuff. <clears throat> uh, if you're watching, feel free to make a comment, uh, add to the discussion, because I like these videos to be more than just me squawking. Robert McLean, my son is conjunct Pluto. So you would definitely have a Scorpio vibe in a way, but it's through Pluto, which rules Scorpio, or at least it's said to rule Scorpio. Um, I would say that this, I've got Sun conjunct Pluto as well. Uh, everyone with Pluto and Scorpio is bound to have, who's a Scorpio, Sun, is going to have Sun conjunct Pluto. Now you've got it with Sun in Virgo, conjunct Pluto Virgo, uh, that's a similar scorpionically obsessive vibration, but it's still through Virgo, so you might read a bit of yourself in these, but, I mean, unless, like, if you're a Leo rising, and you've got the Sun in Virgo, and it's conjunct Pluto, a lot of that Pluto will come through, because it's your first house. Uh, but generally... Uh, I would say that you're still you're you're a Virgo, you know. So uh, if I ever do a Virgo sextrology, you'd you'd probably read more out of that than you would out of Scorpio. <clears throat> Libra guys are definitely beta men. That's interesting, Rose Kelly. I see your point there. Libra men uh, are in touch with their femininity, and like I said, they're the the king is being. The, the sun, the king, is being relegated to a part that's servile. So I could see them having that femininity. Uh, I wouldn't say most Libra guys are gay. I would say that they have to deal with this thing that we're talking about, this femininity. And I see your point, Rose Kelly. I definitely see your point. I just always like to say that, you know, when we see these archetypes coming through people, you're all not ultimately going to know what you are, gay, bisexual, whatever, unless you open up to experiencing it for yourself. And you might do what I did, which is like try it on, bisexuality, and be like, okay, it's cool, but ultimately I'm still more connected to girls. I highly recommend for Libra men to go through that exercise. Try it out. Go and suck a dick or five. And then you'll just be like, okay, I get it. But ultimately... Well, maybe you will be homosexual, or maybe you'll just feel like sexuality is more free than these labels tend to give credence to. That's kind of where I'm at. Anyway, my point was to respond to Rose Kelly here. 
uh, always keep in mind that no matter what these archetypes come through, the spirit, the sex of the soul is a holistic thing. And you can never be pigeonholed just by one sign placement, the placement of the sun especially, because it's only one part of the chart. No worries, QC. Yep, Capricorn is the natural, it's the tenth sign in the zodiac, and it's ruled by Saturn. You are metal snake, Goosey, that is correct. So you're a metal snake, and your sun is in Capricorn. One of these days, I'm sure I'm going to do a co that combination in my Chinese astrology, sun sign astrology videos. Now, uh, <clears throat> thank you for your comments, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as I always say, if you're watching, feel free to join in the conversation. Uh, I'll make a point of, I'll probably look at what you say, and if it's conducive to the conversation now, we'll talk about it. And if it's something worth talking about later, at the end of the video, we'll do that too. Now, <clears throat> this one's a fun one for me, because I've got Scorp uh, I've, I'm Scorpio Sun with Sagittarius Moon. So this is Scorpio Man with Sagittarius Man. I've had... Uh, I've gotten in deep, close relationships with Sagittarius men in my life. And they are deeply, deeply inspiring to me. And I've been with Sagittarius sun men, where I'm just erotically, I just am fascinated by them. And I think it's because I've got the moon in Sagittarius. <coughs> so, the stint... That's what this relationship is called. Scorpio Sun with so Scorpio Sun male with Sagittarius Sun male. It's the stint. <clears throat> in simple terms, Scorpio is determined to have control in relationships, while Sag is one to run free. That said, there is heady sexual chemistry between these chaps, which more often than not results in a one-night stand at the very least. I'd just like to consider that Scorpio is ruled by Mars, and Sagittarius is an active fire sign ruled by Jupiter, which is also masculine. This is a cool combo because they're both masculine planets, Mars and Jupiter, but in different ways towards different ends. I think this relationship can work better than Scorpio and Leo, because Scorpio and Leo are f square to each other, the same nature. The Sagittarius is mutable fire, which means it can, it's not going to be so laser fixated in its ways, and it can communicate with the Scorpio a little bit better, especially if they're both communicating. There's a freeness to the Sagittarius, which is sort of like, it's, it's ether. Uh, it's ruled by the Ether Panchatattva. So Scor Jupiter is ruled by, like, looking way down the line. What makes the most sense? Scorpio gets way into his head and says, what can I do to melt reality through just my willpower? Scorpio cultivates its energy and just goes bang and just tries to penetrate through the walls of its reality, and it's good at that. Uh, Jupiter learns where the general Mars should put that laser-like integrity. And Scorpio loves that Jupiter is macho and mascul masculine and can, in a light a touch way, say, come on, you know, come on, fuckhead, like, l let's go and do this thing, and can kind of tease Scorpio with its natural blistering masculinity and go forward and not get wrapped up in the macho reality of it. You know, the Jupiter will be just looking forward. And when Scorpio says, like, you know, I was kind of thinking that maybe I could be macho here and just, like, you know, like, kind of add my ego or my willpower into the situation, Jupiter recognizes the signs. The eth You know, Jupiter's etheric. And it sees what Scorpio wants and says, oh, okay, 
Well, I'm thinking we should both go here, but you're important to me too, so let's like, you know, like, what what's up? You know, let's figure it out together. We can get over anything. That's Jupiter's buoyant mentality. That's just beautiful in my opinion. Now, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> there's a heady sexual chemistry between these chaps, which is more often than not results in a one-night stand at the very least. They may, each of them, be trying to keep this a no-strings affair, but the quality of the sex keeps them coming back, and inevitably they form a friendship that can develop into more no matter how determined each might be to remain single. Scorpio, so accustomed to being something of an enigma to others, casts himself utterly in the role of researcher here, trying to figure out what makes that Sagittarius tick. Interesting that Scorpio is in Sagittarius' 12th house. Scorpio is dealing with can deeply see into Sagittarius's like just behind the face of the Sagittarius and Scorpio sees what makes the Sagittarius tick and Scorpio's a natural researcher anyway it's the eighth house so it loves to do this loves to see what the Sagittarius is all about often as a man of few words himself with a healthier than average ego the centaur, Sagittarius, takes on the part of the proverbial catch, projecting that of pursuer onto Scorpio. But again, and it's it's in this sort of funny friendship way. But that is a thing, yeah, the, the Sagittarius is one sign ahead of the Scorpio, and just has a natural way of knowing where to go. Scorpio, like, Sagittarius is very sensible, being ruled by Jupiter, it's etheric, it's looking at the biggest arrow, the longest arrow, where how to get the arrow the farthest. Scorpio is just willful and powerful, uh, and sometimes knowing where to put all the pieces is, you know, knowledge is power. Scorpio doesn't always focus on knowledge, it just focuses on willpower. Sagittarius is just this way of being so in the thing that just to dodge points and to be at way ahead of the Scorpio, that Scorpio can, at least I guess maybe Scorpio can be okay with like this game of being the pursuer, which Scorpio doesn't usually do, but it's only because of Sagittarius' way of like looking outside this thing of the m machismo, the ego of it, even though Sagittarius has an ego. My point is, is that Sagittarius is like, fuck, this is what we gotta do, and this is how we're gonna do it. Anyway, I'm gonna let the book speak. <laughs> I'll add my stuff in after, I guess. <clears throat> so, compatibility of Sagittarius and Scorpio. It can be tetchy from the start, as these guys are on different pages much of the time. Scorpio can especially feel his words and intentions are twisted and assigned unintended meanings. Sag is extra skittish here and may prematurely verbalize the fact he isn't looking for anything long term. Way ahead of him and not to be relegated to some lower status, Scorpio will perform his famous freeze out trick, ignoring communication from the centaur fielding that next booty call. Denied, Sagittarius may be forced to face his feelings, which he realizes are only partly fueled by lust. He sees, if only in its absence, that a brand of fulfillment he's scarcely known uh, was possibly on offer here. And if he can get over his big bad self and try in earnest to reconnect with Scorpio, he might not necessarily be welcomed with arms akimbo. But after, say, a few spread eagle moves, all might be resolved. Mm. Carnality. <clears throat> Sex can really take off, or blah. Sex can really take Scorpio off his mark, 
as Sag is that guy for whom even the diehard Scorpio top always imagined he'd flip for. Nowhere is it more in evidence that Sagittarius archetypally descends from Dionysus, that orgiastic god of chaos, than when stretched out naked on his own dais. He invites the probing massage Scorpio is prone to deliver, sighing still like a seeming lump until all of a sudden he springs into action, his wee warrior already at attention. And then with a swipe of lube buttering Scorpio's buns, Sag will be off and away, riding the serpent man into certain oblivion. Losing track of the passing hours, Scorpio's eyes might return from having rolled back into his head, just in the nick of time to fully, consciously experience a climax originating somewhere deep inside him as, look, no hands, barely having the wherewithal to wank his own willy. And Sag may show no sign of stopping, staring down at the splayed scorpion with a look that says something like, I told you so. <laughs> Rock and roll. That's pretty fucking sweet. And I get that. A Sagittarius sun is, uh, it's a fire sign, which is natural for the sun. Which means Sagittarius sun uh, is virile. It's, it's a good place for the sun, depending on where everything else is, depending on the health of Jupiter. Uh, but generally, if the Sagittarius sign has good Rashi aspects and everything and is just mostly okay, the sun does well in Sagittarius as a fire sign. So these people are virile. Like I said, I was saying with the Libra, the sun is the king of the chart. And the king can only do so well depending on the sign. Uh, the king doesn't always do great in Libra, because it's catering to what other people want. But in Sagittarius, the king is going for what it feels natural to it. Sagittarius is the ninth house. It's part of the trine. So whatever comes naturally from within the Sagittarius self is what it's guided by, that arrow. The archer, it's going to hit its mark, and it's not distracted or just dissuaded by anything. And because of that, Sagittarius has just the sun is easily let out and so it's got this constant virility and that's probably where this sexy paragraph is kind of coming from so the Sagittarius can just keep going uh, and Scorpio likes the long haul so to say so when the two of them get together and make that hot combination that hot sexy combination that can just keep going for a while I can see Scorpio loving that. The female in the Scorpio, I think, probably deeply digs that. And also still feels machismo, because, again, Jupiter takes it and doesn't make it anything too personal. It's just, I'm just virile, and this is what I'm going to do. And they probably, if I understand it correctly, they probably don't make that big of a deal about it. Although, I don't know. They're both mas macho signs, they're both masculine, so the Scorpio will have to communicate these machismo measures and directives with the Sagittarius so that the Sagittarius doesn't get over overstep the natural virility that is natural to the Sagittarius. The, Sag the Sag won't let it not happen. The Sagittarius is just going to be what it is. There's the arrow. Bang. So if these two communicate, just like with any of the signs, they will easily, pretty easily, in my opinion, find a good way of the Scorpio not being burned, uh, and the Scorpio still feeling like an important part of the relationship. In fact, the Scorpio will probably be like the psychologist, looking at the 12th house of the Sagittarius. That's probably a big part of this. Sagittarius helps the Scorpio to express its second house makes Scorpio feel like it's cultivating and it's a resource of itself fortifying Scorpio's second house resources whatever and the Scorpio will feel its own sense of power in the relationship by being the psychological mother or you know the the one who's 
reaching into the back of Sagittarius of consciousness and saying, don't think too much about everything, you know, and just, you know, this is what you love and don't forget what makes you happy. And Scorpio will tell Sagittarius all these things that will make Sagittarius feel like he is someone, the Scorpio is someone for Sagittarius to found himself on. And if he wants to keep standing on the Scorpio, he has to give the Scorpio respect. And the Scorpio will communicate that as the 12th house person. The researcher type. And just because Scorpio is not one to get pulled under in any relationship. At least not on the surface all the time. Although there's a bit of that going on in here. If it's communicated properly. <clears throat> so that was hot. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm going to keep an eye out for Sagi Wagis and my own personal explorations. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that was Scorpio Man with Sagittarius Man. Uh, now we're looking at Scorpio Man plus Capricorn Man in bisexual, homosexual uh, relationships. The book that we're reading calls this couple the Council. Interesting because their uh, Capricorn is Scorpio's third house, so Capricorn will be drawing Scorpio's immediate mind out, making Scorpio think. I I love Capricorn. I'm fucking crazy about it. Uh, I got things in Capricorn that would suggest that. I got Neptune and Rahu and Uranus there, and these are always things to think about. Um, I just I love Capricorn uh, with this third house thing. Seems to me that Capricorn just easily tells me psychically, not just psychically, but Capricorn just like is just logical about everything. And I've got all these thoughts and secret desires, and when I talk to Capricorn, they're like. Well, just what have you ever tried this? It's like this gem Gemini is the third sign and it's explorative, it's curious and it just it, it goes by lo mercurial logic. So it just tries things out. So, since Capricorn is the third house from Scorpio, Capricorn has just naturally communicates well with Scorpio usually and just says like, "Have you tried this? Have you ever thought of, have you ever thought about doing this this way? Have you ever thought about this sexual Thing. Have you ever tried it? Just try it. And then Scorpio's like, uh, well, I mean, I guess, you know, I haven't, like, I, Scorpio likes to think it just knows so much psychologically, and Capricorn knows that, and there's truth to it, and Capricorn appreciates Scorpio's power and knowledge. Uh, but Capricorn says, like, have you ever tried it in your own experience? And Scorpio's like, I don't know, I guess I don't have the wherewithal. I guess I've just, I don't have the things to try bondage, you know? I've never been tied up before, and it's just, I don't know, I've never tried it. Cor Capricorn's like, well, I got the gags in my basement, so <laughs> if you ever want to try it, feel free to give me a call. And Capricorn just is, makes, in my experience, makes Scorpio feel like, uh, welcome to try out these taboos to keep it discreet if they both want to. Capricorn listens to Scorpio in a way that Scorpio wants to be listened to in a way, at least when it comes to that exploration. And exploring Scorpio's feelings. Um, again, I've got my own chart, I've got my own bias to Capricorn, so let's see how the book translates this particular combination. The Council, Scorpio Man, Capricorn Man. Chemistry. There isn't much hormonal happenstance here. Despite the fact that these two share the same aesthetic sensibility, Scorpio is directive, working underground in his youth. A less than subtle nod to his ruling planet, Pluto, named for the god of the underworld. Whilst Capricorn, feeling he's past life, been there, done that, makes sleeping till 10 blinders on his a A1 priority this time around. Okay, 
Sometimes they word these funny, but I think I see where it's at. I guess Capricorn wants to chill, because <laughs> it's always working so hard, even though it's na it naturally just works so hard. So Capricorn has a deep nature of uh, understanding that it wants to drop the 10th house thing every now and then. Just like, okay, I've been working really hard, and now, uh, what is it I always say? Capricorn works hard, and it plays hard. I think that's kind of what this is getting at. So, <clears throat> Scorpio lacks the leaps of faith that Cap is willing to take in life, and with his bank account, the goat spends all he has, and S Scorpio squirrels away for the next better day. In a way, Cap wins. He doesn't mean to be morbid, but his ruler, Saturn, Father Time, synonymous with ye old Grim Reaper, endows the goat with the searing knowledge that you can't take it with you. Scorpio may try to. Can't take it with you, meaning like money, material, fortification, experience. Scorpio tries to control it all. Scorpio tries to keep it all. Scorpio tries to ex control its own experiences. Capricorn has a way of opening the drawbridge to that which needs to be, like, Pi Capricorn's got, like, Pisces on the third house. So it just lets whatever come financially, whatever it has to give out, whatever its curiosity goes to, it just lets it happen. And S Scorpio's a tight ass about those things. Probably one of the reasons why it loves Capricorn so much. <clears throat> Compatibility. Uh, living for the day may cause Capricorn to enact certain practices that are beyond Scorpio's pale. Ironically, Scorpio will point out, he is far more in the moment, focusing as Scorpio does on big business and small socializing, achieving his goals and en enjoying his same bevy of close friends and the inevitable often interminable boyfriend. If Scorpio isn't in love, he'll still engage a space holder, if only to balance the dining schema. Cap may so beg to differ, being as loyal, if not more unconditionally so, to old chums than the Scorpio, who may keep tabs on his friendships. <clears throat> Sure, Capricorn puts himself out there, enjoying such environments that entail new faces come fresh meat streaming by, laudable in his transparency, uh, meaning like he's not, he's, he's keeps it pretty psychically, but pretty much out there, out in the open, that he's ready to fuck and ready to go. Uh, while Scorpio might feel a need to hide his so-called unseemly prowling, even from his predominantly all-boy world. Yes, Capricorn understands the importance of retaining one's innocence for other people. <clears throat> okay, so, carnality, the juicy stuff. Purity is Scorpio's biggest turn-on, which pretty much precludes Cap from being his lifelong lover. Surely, sex occurs between men of these signs, but long-term relationships are not only unlikely, they're not much recommended. Okay. Of course, it happens, and when it does, there may be a bit of a power struggle. Scorpio needs to establish even a generic emotional connection kissing and other such romantic trappings going a long way toward his feeling comfortable, even having a one night stand. Right, so even on one night stands, Scorpio likes to have these little emotional sig sim signals anyway. Gestures. Now Capricorn is of the mind that such intimacies should be res reserved, making no bones about a booty call entailing little investment. Should emotions arise, excuse me, he'll smooch Scorpio next time out. Next time. Not yet, baby. Sorry, just next one. So often this bond or affair 
ends mid-action, Scorpio taking a decided powder. Should it be a solid bond, a clap on the back of congratulations is in order, their sex life will have so many caveats and escape clauses that they won't get it off together as much as they do with insignificant others. Hmm. I suppose I get it. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it's Saturn and Mars. Capricorn being ruled by Saturn. My, oh, well, okay. So, yeah. Again, I always like to say, if this is getting annoying, ah, whatever, I have to say this because this is part of what I'm trying to teach in these videos is that you can't always just go by the sun. Other factors in the chart uh, are important when considering the dynamics between signs. In my experience, I have Neptune and Uranus and Rahu in Capricorn. So I find Capricorn's sun in men to just be like constantly spiritually just like satisfying and like you know i could get I, I could see myself getting with the capricorn guy and just like deeply loving the way they are and it just being constantly refilling and refueling uh and you know, if they've got sexual, if they got Venus and Mars in ways that dance with me just perfectly, all we would have to do is get some of these sort of archetypal power struggles and things in order, in the way that would make us ultimately work out. It is an interesting one. Mars and Saturn are sort of very similar. It's a different sort of machismo. Saturn and Mars are a different sort of machismo. Saturn is more like doing the bare bones things that they got to do to get along until they can get the pleasure that they want. Where Scorpio likes to have the freedom to be ambitious and to climb to the top of a mountain or whatever. So I can see that the two of them might just only be... I think if I really loved a Scorpio man, I would. it would take me a long time to... I would go out and have my pleasures with other people, with other men, with other people of whatever gender in my case, uh, before finally landing in the lap of the Capricorn. I will have expressed my ambition, and I will need to have always the capacity to keep my ambitions as being important in the relationship and I think Capricorn could could jive with that I can't see why not because Capricorn is very interested in consolidating resources being looking well to society and would want the Scorpio to be doing well like that anyway so yeah that's an interesting one I tend to like them because they're earth and earth and water whereas Scorpio man and Aquarius man are square to each other they're both fixed and it's water and air Aquarius is ruled by Saturn too but it's different as we're gonna see but first uh, yeah that was two signs hope you guys are digging these so far as much as I am I really love to talk with you guys about this stuff it's making me just you know it's giving me a, a sense of my own place in the animal motions of things. So thank you for listening. <sighs> ah, cool. Goosey says Saturn is my favorite planet. And in a lot of ways, Saturn is my favorite planet too. In a lot of ways. I don't know if I would have a favorite. I, I mean, I guess they're all, they're all important. Maybe Venus would be my favorite. I guess actually Jupiter's been my favorite lately. I deeply I got Sagittarius Moon and I deeply empathize with the guru vibe, the spiritual philosopher, explorer, journalist vibe, one who goes and sees it for themselves in their experience. I deeply resonate with that Sagittarius thing. Okay, so, 
Uh, we got two more signs to go, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you've been enjoying this. As I said, if you're watching, feel free to leave some comments. Uh, or if you're just watching after the live thing, feel free to let us know in the comments section what you think of all this and any points you might like to bring. <clears throat> now, our next combination, uh, Scorpio Man with Aquarius Man. Uh, this is called the Antithesis. Scorpio is ruled by Mars, and Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. So it's going to be similar to the last one, although different in its own way. Scorpio is Aquarius's 10th house. Aquarius is Scorpio's 4th house. Uh, I guess I would say that that generally might, might mean that Scorpio might tend to have the virility and machismo that Aquarius wants but is not naturally inclined excuse me Aquarius wants that willpower and machismo and to have that center of strength in itself but it tends to exalt others or more particularly the group Aquarius does well by attracting a group of people together and saying this is what we identify with and they find power in that and others look at the Aquarius and say you really identify with this group that we're in and so you're kind of like a leader in that way because you've gotten the sense of the holistic thing of how we all work together and you're good at delegating because it's Saturn in the pro positive pole of Saturn. So it's good at delegating what everybody ought to be doing, what the general group needs in order to survive. These are Saturn values pitted to the Aquarian humanitarian group orientation, the 11th house thing. Now, because Aquarius kind of, all, the, all, of, the, all of the air signs tend to have this thing where just like with Libra, the sun, the sun's natural ruler is Leo, and that's coming from inside the self as the king. Uh, Aquarius is the set opposite Leo, so it's like I'm not a king. I'm just another follower, just like everybody else is. And every good leader was once a follower, and Aquarius tends to be a follower for most of its existence until a certain point. Sometimes it's in high school, sometimes it's not till they're 30, sometimes it's not till they're 50. But Aquarius eventually exalts himself by the service he's done with other people for so long, identifies with a group, and becomes... Th that's what he leans on for his power. Now, Scorpio is not thinking about any of that. Scorpio is just like this, this internal cultivation of virility from inside itself, and... Scorpio just gets, because Scorpio wants that and is dealing with that nature of things, it goes through experiences, and for Scorpio, it learns, it, it has a submissiveness in an emotional way at first, in the same way that Aquarius is submissive to society until it becomes exalted because it's so strongly identified with the group. Scorpio tends to be submissive and passive and dodgy and everything until it slowly starts to develop a sense for its own center of power and it could be not until again they're like 30 years old or 50 years old and then they figure themselves out a bit and they're then they're a bit more pliable but still keeping their sense of power so Scorpio is Aquarius's 10th house and so Scorpio gives Aquarius a sense of the power in themselves that Aquarius is missing. And that power gives them a 10th house vibe, which Aquarius wants. I mean, everybody wants all of... Everyone wants to integrate everything. And Aquarius is not always naturally there on the 10th house vibe. I think Aquarius vibes more to the fourth house. Aquarius's fourth house is Taurus, and it 
Venus and Aquarius work very well together, so Aquarius loves the fourth house and can get a sense of its own inner peace, but it has a hard time going to the top of the mountain and saying, for its own sake, this is what we have to do, you know? It always is looking for everyone else's okay, and that's being the sun that we're talking about. The sun does better when it naturally does, like, say, from inside itself, this is what I think we got to do. The sun does well in signs like that, and that's including Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, uh, well, particularly the three fire signs, we can understand that, right? So, with all that being said, Scorpio adds some 10th house fortification to Aquarius, where Scorpio says, look, man, you got to just, whatever's inside you, man, you, you add that to whatever you're doing, because that's what I do, and fucking does great for me and Aquarius sees that loves that in the Scorpio and learns to embody it in their own way so that when they go out into the world they're not just trying to give the world what it wants Aquarius tends to idealize a leader and say I see those qualities and I see what this group wants and they lead, Aquarius thinks about what people want first before it leads. Scorpio helps the Aquarius to not think about that. Just trust your instinct and it will lead from within yourself as well as catering to that universal perspective. So anyway, uh, other way is that Aquarius is Scorpio's fourth house. So Scorpio Scorpio adjusts better to the 10th house. Scorpio climbs like the sun nature of is Leo. Scorpio has Leo in the 10th house. So Scorpio tends to t naturally go, as the books have been saying, seek to the top of the pyramid. Scorpio's ambitious and it wants to get to the top of whatever it's doing. Uh, and it often ignores its own inner security and feelings of stability, the fourth house, emotional stability, uh, especially because it's got Aquarius there. Aquarius is kind of like ruled by Saturn and it's logical about emotions, Scorpio is, and it tries to deal with them in a logical way, which is often tough. But Aquarius, Sun, allows Scorpio give Scorpio the space to deal with those emotions logically. We might see that as we're going to read. I, I'm, I, I'll bet we will. Scor Aquarius likes to just outrightly almost even communicate to Scorpio, you know, if I understand correctly, uh, that, you know, what are your needs? You know, what's going to make you happy? And let's do it logically. And Scorpio says, this is this control that I need. And Aquarius is like, well, if this is what we're going for, then let's try it. And it might not always work out the way Scorpio wants, but at least Aquarius is airing it out, giving Scorpio the space to try it out. And that's how Aquarius, being in Scorpio's fourth house, helps Scorpio to unfold its sense of its own fourth house, its own internal security. Hope I didn't lose anybody there. I'm just like thinking in my head these things. But again, uh, maybe we'll read the book, see if what I just said hits the mark, and we'll go from there. See if I can add my personal own personal experience to this. Again, you know, my thing is just you always got to read into the bias of the people who's doing these YouTube things for you. I've got Saturn in Aquarius, so I have a certain relationship with Saturn people, uh, with Aquarius people. I tend to love them, though not really right away. Uh, if I get with an Aquarius person, it, there will be a long-standing friendship that eventually melts at the bit into a deeper connection with them. Because I've got Saturn there, you know? Always keep these things in mind, anyway. So, Scorpio man, Aquarius man, the antithesis. <clears throat> Scorpio tends to think Aquarius is off his rocker, while the water bearer, Aquarius, 
may in turn find Scorpio to be rather stuck on himself, neither of which opinions are typically true. But Scorpio strives not only for a sense of whatever he perceives to be normalcy in life, but Scorpio is typically on a path of trying to view life and other people in an increasingly rosy light, getting back away from the dark dankness that was its childhood. Aquarius, despite the sign's new agey association, can be maniacally withholding and without remorse, a reaction to having often felt rejected in his youth. So in a way, Aquarius is developing boundaries, if not an edge, while Scorpio is trying to keep his stinger under wraps and to let go of that sort of thing. Added to which is the taste factor. Scorpio has a pared down sensibility, while Aquarius can be extravagant or flamboyant, espousing a sort of carny chick, like a carnival person, I think is what that means. <clears throat> so, compatibility. Scorpio is a private person who keeps the same close circle of friends forever. Aquarius has a million acquaintances and his home can be like Grand Central. It is therefore difficult for these two to live together even if they do share a sexual relationship. Love typically has nada to do with this one. Aquarius is known for being out there, a tag that carries more literal meanings. Even though his abode may be a bustle, he doesn't often have a homey existence taking his meals out and traveling from one gathering to the next, if not hosting at his place, which means the guests will be providing the requisite sustenance or substances or foods or whatever. Now this way of living is anathema to Scorpio with his stocked fridge and gourmet lifestyle. He will make whatever scene, uh, yeah, Right, Aquarius is like minimalist and you gets other people going and it's all for the sake of this social thing and Scorpio is a sensualist who's just like got his own fridge stocked and is a gourmet and likes to hold, you know, again, like Aquarius in that fourth house represents like, for, like, sat, like preparedness, Saturnian preparedness. So Scorpio is, doesn't like that live by the seat of your pants, paycheck to paycheck type mentality. So Scorpio will make whatever scene, but solo, slipping quietly in and out. But Aquarius makes it known in no uncertain terms that he's in the house, even if quietly drawing others to him. Carnality. Despite his reputation as the most prolific of sexual predators, Scorpio is typically a one-man man taking goodly time between relationships. Aquarius, too, might be in a long-term commitment, but that rarely stops him from having sex outside those boundaries. This will in no way fly with Scorpio. A purely sexual thing may work for a while, but even here, Scorpio is a romantic, atmospheric, and engaging in sleepy sex with lots of kissing and body contact, and yes, bursts of penetrative force. But Aquarius isn't the lounge lizard that Scorpio is. While sex with Aquarius, for Scorpio, can smack of doing it with some escapee from the circus. Because <laughs> of that craziness. Scorpio shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, Scorpio shouldn't be surprised if this guy is pierced or tattooed in some drastic fashion. The water bearer, Aquarius, likes a bit of freaky, too, launching into, without even first suggesting, some extreme behavior that most wouldn't spring on a guy the first time out. Even when the rare bottom, Scorpio is never truly passive per se, and he feels Aquarius has too specific an agenda of his own. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's just the way Scorpio is, as we've been learning, is that the Scorpio ultimately does want to feel emotionally connected and mono a mono and sort of matched up. And I think Aquarius would see Scorpio's capacity to be strong and powerful, but it's all contained. Aquarius has a power in weird situations. Scorp like Aquarius puts himself in crazy travels and is like bombastic and is like wah and is just like out there with this carnival sort of like fucking let's just do this crazy shit. And Scorpio is is strong and powerful and enduring in a different way. It's like in its muscles and it's in its biological and it's like holding and cultivating energy to just like zap 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 just like zero in enduringly on being the penetrator fucking this person. Uh, an Aquarius can just, you know, can't take advantage of that as much as, you know, other signs, I guess, you know, other combinations. Aquarius just doesn't care to so much. Although again, if there's a connection here, if the Aquarius person also has like Mars in, in Scorpio or Mars trine, the Scorpio sun let's say in Cancer, if we've got an Aquarius Sun person with Mars in Cancer or Pisces, it's even better. With Mars in Pisces, the Aquarius has a much better chance of connecting to the Scorpio Sun, for example. Uh, and they can make it work. This is my point, is that these extremes in the suns don't always deign or signify how the relationship has to be. But there are these archetypes that are interesting. Aquarius ultimately is definitely likes to get a wow power factor, a shock factor, shock value factor. <clears throat> yeah, so I think they can be connected. But there has to be other harmonizing elements in the chart. That's my point. Scorpio and Aquarius. <clears throat> so, uh, I want to get to this one because this is like one of my favorite combinations, whatever gender. Um, just part with girls. The one about Scorpio with Pisces. Scorpio man and Pisces woman is just like awesome. There's a best friend chummy vibe that's natural. Caters kind of to the Scorpio being the man, but... The Pisces is such a sweetheart about feeling like they're macho, and they got I got my own sort of thing going on, and Scorpio's like oh, I know I know, uh, but the Scorpio still tends to be the sort of macho-y top person here, uh, and Pisces has a way of making it feel like they're both in it, and Scorpio feels it too, but Pisces is secretly like that's okay, Daddy, don't worry, don't think about it so much. Which is super rock and roll. At least that's what I'm thinking about in my head. Let's see if the book actually comes out that way. So we got Scorpio Sun with Scorpio Sun Male with Pisces Sun Male. This is called the Insinuation. They're in trine with each other. Pisces is Scorpio's natural fifth house, being fifth from Scorpio. And Scorpio is the ninth from Pisces. Triangle. <clears throat> Pisces and Scorpio make an easy pair. The fish appealing to the serpent, uh, especially if the former, the fish, is younger than the Scorpio. They share a romantic outlook on life, let alone love bonds, in search, as water signs are wont to be, of a feeling, mainly that of abundance and tranquility. They will take their time getting to know each other, Scorpio especially being guarded. But Scorpio marvels at the Pisces, who is at once wise beyond his years, even when a callow fellow, and also rather teenaged in his exuberance and uh, in some of his more puerile antics. 
there's a freeness to the Pisces, it's, you know, just being a goofy teenage sort of like laughing at things that are just sort of innocent, you know. Uh, so Scorpio loses much of his acquired jadedness and spending time with Pisces, who, though Pisces has a harder time expressing his feelings than as than Scorpio does. Uh, who Scorpio happily hisses sweet nothings into Pisces's ear. Ugh. The grammar in these books sucks. Uh huh. Scorpio loses much of his acquired jadedness and spending time with Pisces, who though has a harder time expressing his feelings as does the Scorpio, who happily hisses sweet nothings into Pisces's ear eliciting a response that might not be a cinch to read. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, compatibility. Pisces may reveal little about himself, sometimes never fully fleshing out the circumstances that led him to Scorpio, willing, as he is, to psychosurgically remove bits and pieces of his past that bring him pain or of which he isn't exceedingly proud. I believe that's Pisces. Now, Scorpio, who is on this planet to root things out, will realize that the linear approach doesn't work. So he'll surprise question, cornering Pisces for chunks of information that he'll piece together on his own. And he won't judge the Pisces for the way he is, Scorpio will just naturally be curious to see the whole thing played out, and Scorpio will, will kind of play the game with Pisces, if any of this is going on. Pisces does have a way of making himself glorified in the picture of his own narrative to himself and to others, but more trying to do it to others. Scorpio is just aware that everyone's got their shadow, I've got my shadow, and as long as you will give it to me in secret or, you know, talk and you're kind of secretly winking, you know, Pisces, I mean, Pisces, I think, trusts the Scorpio in a certain deep way, seeing where Scorpio's really at. And so, and Pisces is generally just trusting and just sort of, ah, everything is going to be what it is, you know. And so Pisces, while he'll dodge the shadows as he talks joyously about the joys in his life, Scorpio will see the dodges, the left and the right turns, and generally in this combination he'll love the Pisces for all of it. Pisces has the ability to drop into any situation, and when he makes a love match with Scorpio especially, it can feel to third parties as if the fish has been there all along. These guys are quite tender and lovey-dovey, typically not into gay culture per se. Rather, they'll inhabit a rarefied social world that just happens to be 90% homos. They might be lovingly labeled editorial gays, as they are often writers or otherwise find themselves being written about. Now, carnality. The general feeling here is that this could be a keeper, so both parties might hang back a bit on the sex, not wanting to give even the slightest slutty impression. There will be major making out and maybe some brief over the fly play, but any flushed frustration serves the purpose of making the inevitable session the event of the season, while in the interim it fosters an atmosphere of nearly adolescent excitement that sends the right signals. This is a wholesome and natural, blonde, natural bond, blossoming organically, and they both feel it. Scorpio is especially hungry for genuine experience in life, which is, ri which is why he rarely indulges in outright promiscuity, though he may m be a serial makeout artist. <laughs> Pisces is always looking to escape reality, uh, a little, 
determined to increasingly create enchantment in his life. Though it might sound cliche, these boys love a roaring fire, candlelight, fine wine, and other such romantic trappings like shared hot baths, getting squeaky clean, their tongues worming into any number of places. That's cute. Yeah, like I said, I just, I really deeply get the Scorpio and Pisces combination. Uh, I've never gone out with one for a long period of time. And I don't know too many Pisces men, but I know enough to get where this is kind of coming from. Uh, Pisces, I've found, at least in my experience, uh, Pisces can definitely wrap itself up in these illusions in the sense that it's trying to make a grandeur narrative of itself. And Scorpio sees it and sees maybe the internal trauma that might be causing this compensatory attitude towards themselves and their reality. Or Scorpio will just see that Pisces just likes, I mean, they're ruled by Jupiter, like Sagittarius. So Sagittarius wears the glory on its face and says, like, I'm glorious and everything's glorious and I'm glorious. And Pisces will paint a story in that same self-glorifying way. Uh, but Pisces does it in a, an oddly modest, he doesn't put it right out front, which means that Pisces isn't the same virile vibe as Sagittarius. It's a little bit more quiet, although the sun is looking for that Jupiterian glory. And so the two of them will be in a world of glory unto themselves. And the Scorpio will love to feel like he sees the glory Pisces is going for in himself, and it seems innocent. It, it usually is innocent. I mean, even if it comes through in Pisces is weird, not so innocent way where Pisces has wrapped itself up in a spider web of illusion or whatever uh, and so that can cause them to not be all that innocent or whatever but ultimately Scorpio sees it all as just someone who's just looking for a certain glory that Scorpio loves in themselves and it's at the root Scorpio feels Pisces as freedom so Scorpio doesn't do it through illusion. Scorpio is bristlingly, bristlingly ice cold and will just fuck you to reality when it need, when Scorpio needs to. Uh, and so Scorpio doesn't live in that illusion quite so much. Although they can live in their own... Because they're emotional compulsions, they're wearing them in, secretly in different places all the time. Scorpio has its own emotional run-ins where it's not necessarily lying to itself but it's lying to other people about what it's going and doing sometimes you know so so scorpio will route out in the pisces relationship eventually they'll break down the walls that they subliminally put up because even pisces can bring to the scorpio a, a pure the purity that you know, because the Scorpio sees this childlike Piscean surrender and innocence that we all know and love in Pisces, Scorpio is just going to eventually just let that icy barrier just mostly just sort of like, I don't really need to put that up with this person because they're just so much more interested in peace, uh, the peace between us and to glorify me the Scorpio often sees in the Pisces. Not just me, but the, the mutual relationship. And so it tends to just work pretty well for each other. You know, it's Jupiter and Mars. They're both macho masculine, but they're both feminine signs, which means they want this macho masculinity, but they're sensitive. They're sensitive to each other, and they know what each other are like, so they can plan and organize and engineer bliss for each other with little surprises and little ways of showing that they love each other. And especially if they love each other, that relationship can do very well, depending on the harmony of all the other planets 
in the charts and if they've got a deeper connection than just their sun sign. Yeah. Well, that was fun, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me and my crazy sort of bisexual personality. Um, I think I wanted to do this video just to kind of get that out there. Just to kind of, for myself, I wanted to air it out. Uh, so I'm glad that you guys gave me the space and the opportunity to do that for myself as a Scorpio trying to air out all this secret emotional junk that's been inside me. It's part of the Dustin Cormier story. Not every Scorpio is going to want to blurt out all their junk like on YouTube like I am. It's just my personal way of making myself comfortable with all this. Uh, eventually I want to be like a, a gonzo journalist of the transpersonal erotic heart. Yeah, I've kind of got that down lately. You know, Gonzo, meaning like Hunter S. Thompson is someone who I've uh, been inspired by. He's a Gonzo journalist, which means he's Gonzo in the sense of like, uh, he, he's, he researched drugs and psychedelic drugs and all these. He put himself in the state of a drug user in order to understand and empathize and try to get in his experience what he can get out of that dimension of the dark side of reality. And he got a lot out of it because he put himself so gonzo. Like, gonzo, it relates to the fact of being gone, right? Uh, so, like, losing yourself in it. And so I want to be a gonzo journalist of the erotic heart. And so that's part of why my journey has led me here to talking with you guys about this. Um, and on top of my own personal crap, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the knowledge I've shared from these particular texts. Sextrology by Starsky and Cox. Cosmic Couplings by Starsky and Cox. These two. They're pretty good. I recommend them. Especially if you've got like your Ascendant Lord. Spe like for a Leo Rising. If you're a Leo Rising and your sun is like anywhere, you should read this book just to get a sense of it. But again, I was deeply, I'm deeply interested in these things because I've got Sun Mar and Mars and Pluto in Scorpio. So, you know, maybe I'm the only one that needs to go to these sexual depths of taboo and exploration. Maybe that's what I'm for. I don't know. But either way, if you're into that, I'm here for you. And that's what I'm going to try to do with a lot of my life. As for yourself, keep listening to the light within you, to the heart within you wherever your heart might take you on your journey. Uh, and I hope that you got something, if you're a bisexual or homosexual, I hope you uh, got something out of this reading, particularly that you're special and I like you. <laughs> and someone out there is going to like you, no matter what sign you are. Don't get too locked up in the figures of the sun. Always consider the other parts of the chart in context. And always consider the holism that is you and everything that you are whenever you're dealing with astrology. Uh, take the symbols on the outside and relate them to the liquid molten spirit on the inside. And don't let any of those be too fixed at any point. Because you, on the inside, can get a lot out of the symbols, but the symbols should not overtake what you are. It's always a medium. Hmm. I'm just looking at our last YouTube comments, and as I always say, if you've been watching these, and if you're watching later, I'm going to start trying to schedule my videos so that you can have the chance to see that I'm going to do a video so that you can join in on the conversation. It's cool, my friend Goosey is just always chatting with me throughout these. You can always feel free, Goosey. I saw that Queen movie too, it was pretty cool. Um... It was, it was pretty great, actually. Um, just, you know, I think I prefer, like, epic documentaries that actually show bits and pieces of the people. Certain biopics are cool. I really liked the Doors movie. Although, again, that had its... Bleh. I'd like to even be one of these people in one of these biopics or whatever. I'd love to be, like, you know, like, the person that, like, acts out Peter Frampton or, like, Robert Plant when they were young or something like that. 
I just gotta get my vocals in order. One day at a time, folks. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Spirit. This has been Bisexual, Homosexual, Scorpio Sun. Uh, and feel free to watch anytime. We've got more stuff going along in the world of Dustin Cormier and How to Rock Spirit. Thanks for watching, folks.